What's up, everybody? It is Sunday, January 26th. Um, today's episode of the podcast is brought to you by Division Street Auto. Division Street Auto is basically your one-stop shop for anything mechanical that your vehicle may need, whether it's tire rotations, oil changes, that simple stuff down to the big ship, man. You need a new engine, new tranny, they got you covered. I've been taking my cars there for years. Um, I feel like I trust them. Whenever anything goes wrong, I don't feel like I leave that place uh, thinking I got got. You know, they do great work, uh, quality stuff. And again, most important, you know, I don't feel like I'm getting taken advantage of when I leave there. Excellent, excellent place to take your vehicles. You can catch them at 595 Division Street in Pawtucket, 401 Seven two three seven zero eight zero is how you can go ahead and give them a call. Mention this ad. Mention that you heard them on the J Squared podcast, and they'll hook you up with ten percent off all the labor. So, get good work on the ride and save yourself some moolah in the process. We are also brought to you by AJ Drywall and Plasters. Uh, so the nice thing about AJ Drywall and Plaster is they kind of take care of their customers. You know, they do everything from ceiling layovers. Finished basements, new homes, remodels, additions, storefronts, whatever it is, commercial, um, even single rooms, acoustical ceilings, whatever you need, drywall, any kind of construction stuff like that, hit up AJ Drywall and Plaster. They'll take care of you if you need anything resurfaced or skim coated, whatever it is, they got you covered. What they look forward to, or I'm sorry, can't talk today, what they look for is they just want to make every customer 100% satisfied. So go ahead, check them out on Facebook, give them a call. And other than that, on today's episode of the podcast, we have my good friend Mike Otten coming through to talk some shit with us. Uh, I've known Mike for a few years. He knows J2, not J2 podcast, but he knows J also. And Mike actually helped a small local poker business go from, I guess he would say, a failing business with not much potential to being named the VP of operations and basically has it thriving and growing. The nice thing about Mike is he's a big giant. You know, if you saw him on the streets, he'd probably run the other way, but he's a big teddy bear. You know, he's, he's really funny. He's a sweetheart. He's a nice guy. And I think that uh, I think that everybody will enjoy him. You know, I think everybody have a lot of fun with him. So... Let's uh, give it up for that. We also have Troy Edward Ray, and Troy's got some interesting stuff he's going to talk about with us. He was the lead singer previously for a band called A Failing Sky. Now, I to be honest with you, I don't know too much about the band. I know that Jay was really interested in that music and, you know, pulled some strings, and he's got him to come on the show. So we're going to talk to Troy Edward Ray and see what he's got to tell us, you know, tell us his story. I'm curious to know is, uh, I'm curious to know when you are, you know, I guess you would say semi-famous, what's that life like, man? You ever sleep on the road? You have groupies? What's going on? Other than that, guys, enjoy. You know, this episode has been a lot of fun. Hope you enjoy it, and that's it. Time to talk some shit with the J Squared Podcast. Here we go. Are we good? Are we, are we, good. we live, man. We're live. We're on the oh. air. We're on the air. What you got? You you going to start or you want me to start? I, I just don't even want it to be a... A thing? Yeah, like a thing. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, guys? You call, you call uh, we're here at the J Squared Podcast Studio, a.k.a. J's... Living abode. <laughs> um, today we have uh, Troy Edward Ray here. What's going on? Ooh, what's going doing? on? Say what's up. What's going on? How are we doing? And another and our story. and our good friend over here, Mike Otten. Thanks for having me on, guys. I appreciate it. Nice to be here. <laughs> Am I acting natural? Just, <laughs> yeah. just forget. Just forget the cameras there. Forget the mics okay. are off. Yeah, we're Sometimes just kind of talking. I just don't yeah. want to be weird. Am I being weird? No, I find that it helps if you uh, if you close your eyes and you don't see the mics or the camera. I just don't want to be weird. <laughs> So, what, what, you just don't want to be weird? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Act weird? weird. George, no, be ready to edit all. tonight, Bob. Yeah, there's going to be a, a lot of editing. <laughs> Great. So, today, Troy is here. 
I'm here. Troy, tell us about yourself. Tell, tell us something. Jesus. <laughs> That's pretty broad. <laughs> what? No. You just like just... Kind of where, where, where so, you started out. You just were, so, you just so you have member. an idea. <clears throat> In the intro, before anybody even hears this, they already understand that, you know, he's a lead, uh, was the lead singer of the band, what the band was, roughly how many fans they had. Well, not fans, but like Facebook followers. Yeah. Who does? Whoever's listening. listening. By the time they're they're hearing this, yeah. you know, with the ad, when I said to, on today's episode, we have, you know, Troy here. Well, oh, you put that in already? Okay. Yeah, of right. course. That, that's go. what we got to do, explain a little more. Josh so when they start hearing this fashion. random voice. Well, that's why I said you should listen to some so you get a feeling for what the listener is going to experience. Right. Yeah. Google podcasts real quick so you know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> One time I asked Shane, I'm like, I'm telling him about a podcast I listen to, and then he's looking at me with that, you know, that Shane face, kind of like squinting. Yeah, and I'm just like, do you know what a podcast is? He goes, no. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It oh. says, uh, like, the average listener is between 25 and 50. He doesn't, he doesn't, doesn't fall in that range. He doesn't fall in that range. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I got questions, man. When did you start uh, with the musicianship? I mean, when I... The first song I remember ever singing was I Believe I Can Fly, which is pretty touchy because it's R. Kelly. But, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, this really, would have been, you had to, use, episodes ago. You had to use the word touchy. Yeah, it's a little touchy. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I just remember I remember being on the beach and just like singing and my mom being like, you sound good. And then it took me a really long time to like be able to sing in front of anybody. How old were you? I was probably like six or seven. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. That was when I found out like I enjoyed singing and I was good at it. Nice. And I remember like my first time singing in front of people was like my preschool graduation. And I go up God damn, to dude. sing um, I Believe I Can Fly and I sang one note and started crying and ran out of the building. Oh, uh, And uh, they stage went and fright I, or? Stage fright. And it took forever to get over that. Even family party is karaoke, cry. Run off stage, cry really? Yeah, like I was like like panic attack because I just I I just I was afraid of what people would think. Right. Although I knew I was good. It's live though. You it's know, live. It's, it's a whole different thing. Like, and think then about how. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Think about how nervous and like weird you get knowing this is being recorded. You know what I'm saying? And we have the ability to go back and listen to it before anybody else does. Yeah. So being a kid, knowing that like any fuck up that you do any note that you miss or just anything that's not perfect, everybody's going to stand there and ridicule you for it. Yeah. It's going to be scary. It's okay. scary. Live, live is a whole different story. But then, like, I, I mean, I didn't really start getting into music really until middle school. Like, it took me – I focused so much on sports that – um Football, right? Football, basketball, football. volleyball, everything. I was just all into sports. And then I met this group of kids in middle school – that are still good good friends of mine right today. And uh <laughs> you can't turn off your phone. Is that where we are now in these days? We can't um, fucking turn off our phone for one hour. Right. All right. Not yeah. half an hour. I met these kids in middle school and uh they were like cool and like the girls liked them and they were playing the battle of the bands and I was like, I like that. Right. And I was like, like wait, it always resorts to that. Like, man, how can I get some pussy? Yeah. Oh, oh, shit, start a band? Yeah. I'm with it. I remember going to my mom, like, Mom, I want a guitar really bad. And she was like, Garrett, it's going to be the biggest waste of money, but it's your birthday money. Buggy. And I bought one at Toys R Us and ran with it, taught myself how to play guitar, and that's where it all started. And you were, what, like, 13? Yeah, 13. 13. Yeah, thought it was cool. And now, you that is that when you started a band? That's I don't want to. I don't want to fast forward too quick. I know you were part of a successful band. Yeah. But like, I want to. Before that shit, what happened? Um, I mean, that's what, so where it started in my bedroom. And with that, with your with, friends, that band? Not even. They were in a band, but I wasn't cool enough yet, and I didn't Fair know how enough. to play guitar or anything. You just knew it. Like, but I was there. I they're roadie, bringing stuff in. You know, just being around, immersing myself in that scene. In the culture. In the culture. Yeah. yeah. You know, nothing was better than that. And I just remember the feeling of just being at the shows and being with the band. And I was like, that's... So wait, were you, were you hired by the... Or were you just... You were just kind of like tagging along? Or were you... How, how did well, it work? so this was middle Rudy. school. Well, I yeah. was just... This was a middle school oh, band. Right, right. They were playing local shows. Were they I the was, same age? Same age. And I ended up being... Beca- I was uh, ended up becoming a member of the band. That's eventually. Young, man. I wow. Don't anybody in my middle school yeah. being a band. That's we started cool. off very young. By the age of 17, we were playing Lupo's. Wow. Sold out. That's like, legit. It was crazy, you know? Like, just to, to put that in perspective, like, I remember not long ago, like, the rapper Fabulous would, like, he goes to Lupo's. Yeah. It's not like a, 
It's oh yeah, popular. no, there's, there's some like legit artists, big like headlining I think artists. Ja Rule and Ashanti were just there. Wu Tang yeah. was there. Wu Tang, who's that? <laughs> that was before. I mean, I that was still my local band. That's yeah. not even a failing sky. That was my local band. We started and we just we were awful when we started, and then we just kept progressing, and that's how it works. That's kind of like what we're doing now. And you just uh, yeah. you work out the kinks. What sounds good? What doesn't sound good? Then you get your first show. And you remember where your couple. first show was? <clears throat> yeah, my first show was at Blaze's Billiards in West Warwick. I remember that place. Remember that place? I think uh, yeah. poker. Yeah, I was there. <laughs> was there? And yeah. those fucking assholes. There, it was like a cover band. It was a cover band of these guys that were like 40, 50 years old. They wanted us to play last, and we were like headlining. Hell yeah! But little did we know that their crowd only could stay to a certain time mm. and then they had to leave so they got off stage they packed up all their friends and left and we played in front of nobody oh no <laughs> so it's wow. gotta be so shitty like cause I know. you still have to play right yeah we have to play. so it's almost like now we're just <laughs> hey you're practicing but at that here. point we were just soaked to be on stage yeah you know we just so, wanted to be on stage l- let me ask you this were you I'm sure you were getting paid was it a lot was it a little you don't I'm not without were no, nothing. Getting just paid? Not I can imagine you getting paid. No, and here's what it was. Th- this is you get this free is, exposure. That's what it's about. When you're a new band, especially we were teenagers, we're in yeah. high school. You hit up the promoter. He's like, "You want to play the show? You got to sell X amount of tickets." He takes all the money and runs. <laughs> you don't get anything. But wow, that's how you what gain exposure. You know what I'm saying? Right, that's how I know it's fucked up. So how long do you have to go before you start getting paid? Like, wow, how many? So you're how did you? Enough. How did you know until what's you, big enough? What's not big enough? Until you can play a show and bring people. And until until people you're bringing start, a following. Until people start coming to your show to see Jay, yeah. you know, you're not going to make money. Right, right, right. What's right. what? Why are they going to pay you? You know. Now, I know. I know some clubs will say like you know you can either take a payment or you can like. You know the door. Say so you have a hundred people come in, they give you a percentage of the game. Yeah. Now, how how did you guys? How did that? How did that work for you guys? Was mostly like a one type one payment, or did they say, hey, if you guys can bring in, you know, you know, two hundred people, we'll give you this much money. Well, it matters what level you're <clears> on. <throat> you know, yeah. so when you're a local band, you're selling tickets, and I mean, most of the time they're not going to fucking pay you, regardless. Yeah. But when you get to a certain level, like when I got to a failing sky, before we even went on tour. Contracts were sent out to each promoter in each city all around the country stating that we're guaranteed X amount no matter what. It's called a guarantee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we collect that. And then some will be like, well, we can't do a guarantee. We'll, we'll do a door deal. So we'll get the door deal. That guarantee contracts. means like if anything should fall through and the show doesn't happen, you're yeah, still getting pay paid for blocking off that amount of time for them. Yeah. Putting in the work, getting your shit together to go yep. out there. We've so gotten the preparation into that goes brawls I, over I guarantees. This, uh, like physical, like, we group <laughs> battle. <laughs> what do you mean? Like somebody a, in the face over a contract. Yes. Yeah. We, Insane. We, it was all over like, the, like all like, oh my God, all over the internet, like, like alternative press and all these like, um, alternative web pages covered a story alternative about, alternative facts. Like it was, <laughs> no, they covered a story <laughs> about what happened to us when we were in, Michigan in the sky comes to us at the end of the show and he's like, hey, I don't got your money. And we're like, yeah, you, you don't have our money? And we were going from one tour to the, to the next. Yeah, and so we, needed that money. we were stuck. We had no gas. Like, we needed that money. Right. And it ended up being a brawl. The guy, the sound guy was, like, messing with our sound. Next thing I know, like, I look up and, like, one of my members is beating up the sound guy. Nice. We all jump off the stage. Pool sticks are swinging. Wow. Chairs are being thrown. <laughs> All right, so let me. Uh, let me uh, <laughs> I've been in a couple uh, of those. Yeah. Follow you real quick. And the name of that, the, the name of the band when you actually you found your most success with is Failing Sky. A Failing Sky. A yeah. Failing Sky. Yeah. Right. Forgive my failing, ignorance. Yeah. I just I'm not a big alternative. Um, yeah, no, it's all person. Good. But when did you link up with them? How did you get so it, connected? It comes from when I was in the band I started in middle school. Yeah. We ended up going. It, at, what was that name again? The it band was called Die Another Day. All right. Um, and it went from like middle school all the way into high school into being a, an adult, they kicked me out of the band that I started twice. And Why did they kick you out? Just, I've always been... <laughs> real, real I mean, I, I was a dick. Were I was you getting into dick? fights and all this stuff. I'm and like, asking. The attention got the best of me and my head 
got a little big. And, you were young, dude. I, had, you know, I got fired from my first ever management job for being like a pompous asshole. Yeah, I was a dick. I can't get you that. I can but, um, it was fucking, it was, it, all 10 of them were wrong, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I ended up getting kicked out of the band, and then I, I didn't have a band at all, and um, I knew a feeling Sky was a local band, and they were on the up. Like, they would play Club Hell and sell it out, play Lupo right, and sell it out. Hell's not around mm, anymore, is no, it? No, it's uh, Lupo now. Uh, What's word? Lupo's? Is Lupo still Lupo's? Lupo's or? is called The Strand, but it's the same place. Same shit. I used to go to Club Hell like, when I was, you know. Young, young, drinking days, 20, 21. Wow. Yeah, that was wild. But I was, um, I was sitting at home one day. Actually, no. I was trying to join this band from New Hampshire. Yeah. And I was with them in the car. Oh, shit, bro. You're famous. Th- dude, that's actually before I was in the band, so I'm not oh, so even, you're not even in the band. I'm not even in the fucking band. <laughs> that's when they were still a local band. Show a picture of, like, the Jeez. Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> Um, right, so, <laughs> so you knew of the band before I you knew of the band We were friends And that's just from liking the music You know and Yeah I knew, of, so I, I knew of the band too. But I was a fan of the band And then we became friends And then they knew of me We played a bunch of shows together Whatever So I'm joining this new band In New Hampshire And I'm in the car with this kid And I get a call From Adam He's in the band Feeling Sky He's like Hey man Dave just quit the band Or Justin quit the band Dave's moving from guitar to bass and you're, um, you're a singer, right? You do vocals? I stu- I joined the band as the bass player. As the bass player, right? Yeah. yeah. Fucking weasel your way in there. Yeah. Huh? So, so the bass player went to guitar, and then I became the bass player. And he was like, yes or no, we leave for tour next week. We're going to California. And I was like, this kid's sitting next to me. I'm like, yeah, like, I'll be home soon. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know? Like, so yeah, sounds good. Just can't tell this kid. Yeah. So I was like, I tell the kid, I'm like, I gotta go home. So he drives me all the way back to Rhode Island. Damn. Uh, the next and day, hopefully he doesn't listen to this episode. Oh, yeah, I know. I don't even remember his <laughs> name. Uh, I don't even know his uh, name. Well, if you're that kid, man, you know. Yeah. Troy, sorry, bro. He didn't mean it. Yeah, I didn't mean it, man. <laughs> he ditched <laughs> you to become famous. Yeah, but um, <laughs> so I, the next day, meet up with a feeling guy and we go to Chris's house. He's the guitar player, and I learn all the songs in a week. That following week, we drive to as the, the bassist or as, as the, the bass player. <clears throat> oh, okay. And we drive to Denver. Actually, Greeley, Colorado was the first date. All the way from Providence to... Greeley. So obviously you don't have a charter wow. bus. Well, whose car are you taking? <laughs> what? We, were, we had a Super. 15 passenger van in the trailer. Right. 6x12 trailer. Bunks in the back. So cool. when you join a new band, like, like how does it happen? Like, do, you, do you discuss like a, like payment? You know what I'm saying? How, like, like, how, do, how do you make money? You know what I mean? Like you... you it's your job. You, it you know what I mean? We literally, so like when you're on the road, like you don't, it's just a collective thing. Like most of the time, here's how it works. Especially early on. You get paid, that shit's going right into the tank. Gas. Yeah. Right, right into the tank. And then what about, hopefully. What about like drugs and booze? I mean. It takes care of all that. A lot too. of people, like a lot of times the bars will just let us drink or, <clears throat> I mean, coming out of personal pockets. Who supplies the cocaine? <laughs> so you guys are just all... That was a little of, later on. You're all kind of just like sacrificing like, yeah, set, everything just to try to try to be, make a name for yourselves and, right. be, and uh, get more and more fans. You have to give everything up. Right. Everything. There's nothing else that you can do besides put your all into music 100%. That's, That's right. It. I like that. I like that attitude. Yeah. I like that real... Well, you have to love it enough. And you, you yeah, have to. Yeah, passionate. You lose... Friends, you lose loved ones, girlfriends. What is that like? What do, what do you mean? Give, give us an example. You don't have to mention names, but I'm saying like where Actually, somebody that was that was really near okay. to you that was just like, you know what? Fuck this guy now. Cause I mean, he's... relationships with like girls, like my my daughter's mother and shit. She was not having it. Like, mm. you know, even my girlfriend now, I was touring up until February of last year. She's not about it. <laughs> like, she's like, not about it. You can't, you can't expect because they don't know what the fuck's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So what you need to choose. Like, do you want to live well, this on. lifestyle or do you want to be... Some girls can do it. Some people can, but some people can't. I mean, I think about all the... Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No problem. All the military wives, military girlfriends, when their husbands deploy and, they like, cheat. stuff like that. You know, like... That's how you get over that? Is that a fair... I mean, I'm just rhetorically asking. Is that a fair kind of approach, being a girlfriend comparison? Like, shouldn't you be supportive? Shouldn't you be... Mm. It's a, you know, it's kind of a selfish way. To play yeah, it. <laughs> a selfish way. The guy's trying to be. You I mean, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Thing, though, I. But hold on. Let, let me, I'm asking I a question. Just interject. Yeah. If there's something selfish about me 
saying, I know that you miss me. And, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not, this is not digging no, no, you no, because no, no, I, no, no. I think in order to chase your dreams, you have to be selfish. Mm. Like just doing this right now, I'm away from my, my girl, I'm away from our kids. Right. And it's, it's to benefit me. Ultimately, will it pan out and help them too? Yes. So that's not selfish then? It, it is selfish because it's something that I want to do. I, you know, we could be fine if I just got up and went to work every day and spend every evening helping them with their homework, being with her. If you chased your so, own dream and left your family behind, I would say that that's selfish. But if you're going to pursue something to help all of you, is that but really selfish? It, it's a personal well, goal of mine to I do think, this. I mean, like, what if there was a job that was going to pay you 200000 and it was in, let's say, the next state over? Is it nice to have a woman that would support you know? it and be okay with it? Of course it is. It's great. But I can't blame a woman that says, no, you know, like, I don't want you away for 80, 80 weeks. If well, you have I, that yeah. job, then quit, or 80 hours a week. If you have that job, quit it, because it's more valuable to us and our family, you being home with us. I, I can understand somebody not being, you know, saying, hey, look, this this just, just isn't for me. But I'm saying as far as from the personal perspective, I don't know. I would never, like, meaning if I'm going out to, to make bread for my family, no matter how I have to do it, like, meaning my father, he he went to Saudi Arabia for a year to make money for, for to feed his family. Mm. I mean, well, could, could I say? Sometimes you got to do it, but, you know, there's... It's a double-edged sword, you know. Either you go and you make the money and everybody's happier, or you go and, and you sacrifice. Not, not being, you sacrifice your relationship with your family. Well, I think being in a band too was probably looked at more as like a hobby, mm-hmm. even though you're trying to make money. But yeah. it's like if I tell my wife hey, I got a job making 200k a year, but I got to travel half the year. Right. But if I right. tell her, hey, I'm going to join a band and we're going to go travel, and you know they're going to see it as you're going on the road, you're, you're drinking, you're drugging, you're partying, and having fun. You know, you're not you're not working. That. You know. I mean, I. It's not wrong. They're not wrong because you enjoy it. it, it. it. Should, I mean, it's like it shouldn't be frowned upon though, just because you enjoy it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because if you can make a living doing it, it I mean, and that's the thing; it's never guaranteed. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So one tour, you'll make this money. You're taking a chance. You're next, gambling. You're never and like I'm gonna put this out there. My girlfriend is 100, 110 percent supportive of my music. She's at every show. Mm-hmm. She she fuels me when I think I sound bad. She thinks I sound good. The that's awesome. Is, that's that's great. Yeah, well, that's, well, you need that. Yeah, yeah it's absolutely. Amazing. She's great. But the problem is, when I'm gone, not only is she on her own, but I come back, I have no job. I have nothing. Mm. Do you know right. what I'm saying? Right. So then it's like, okay, well, I'm going to wait for my other tour. But in this time, like, do you mind uh, spotting Supporting me for all me. these weeks, yeah. like, until yeah. I find an, another gig? Or for another? me, I've been doing it since I was 18. I'm 27 now. It's old, you know? Right. It's gotten to the point where I need to, like... Do something. Do something. I can still play music, and I still do. I have a solo project now, but like... Oh, hold on. I don't want to jump to that, because we didn't even really get to the, the good years of the yeah, of Failing Sky. Yeah. I want to hear that story mm, before. Okay. You know, not that I'm not interested in yeah. what you're doing now, but mm. there's a lot of yeah, questions I'm, I'm, I ask. How do we get there? Well, fucking tour bus, groupies I get questions about. <laughs> Other, so, I mean, how I to become know. a groupie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you still have their contact info? Because <laughs> we're famous now. I mean, shit. Just kidding. We're both happily involved. Um, with each other <laughs> but Joe Joe's like yeah we're all single guys we're like none of us what, what? <laughs> um, alright so you, you linked up with a failing sky you were on that road trip with your buddy you ditched him in New, uh, New Hampshire yeah so your first tour you drove to Denver yeah and, and any, really any crazy Colorado. stories I'm sorry the, not Denver Colorado the craziest thing about that one was um, I kind of we kind of slept all the way up there to, like everyone took turns turns driving, driving. And we slept all the way up there. We get out of the car, and it just smells like fucking shit. Like, manure shit. Come to find out, like, three streets over is, like, this, like, butcher. So it's, like, cows being slaughtered. And, like, that right. was, like, I'm like, this is fucking awful. I want to go home. Shit. Like, I don't I don't want to do this. Are any of the band members vegan or? Nope. Oh, that's good. No. no. At that time, vegan being a vegan and, like, gluten-free is, wasn't, like, a thing. It wasn't cool. So wait, that cool was the though. craziest thing, being that on was, the like, road the, in a band? I'm, I'm is, talking, <laughs> was a slaughtered no, cow. The first, like, the first <laughs> crazy right. thing on the way up there was just, like, when we got out, it smelled like shit, and I was like, I want to fucking go home. Like, I hated it. I didn't want to. Like, kids, don't be a musician. It was, it was like, it was, like, my first, like. That seems so minute no, compared to. I'm, is I got that where you were staying? Like, no, that's where we had to stay that night, and I'm like, dude, I want to go. And, like, this was, like, my first experience on the road. I'm like, we're in this shitty-ass town. I was like, I don't know if I want to do this. And I started doubting myself. And mm. like, what the hell is going on? And then we played the show and killed it. And we got the fuck out of there. And it was mm. cool. When you say killed it, how many in attendance kind of 
roughly, you know, just... It was a full show. It was like, I mean, it was our first show outside of New England. Like, you know... Was it outside? Was it in a bar? It was bar? inside. Was it it in was like a... in this art space. Now, were y'all the headline or did you open for somebody? We, or? we were co-headlining with this band called Everyone Dies in Utah, which is crazy because later on, we ended up doing a full U.S. tour with them, like two or three years later. That's so sick. Yeah. That, that is sick. That Because it's, a, you know, a band. And this was... How how many years ago was that? 2000, 2010. 10? 10, yeah. It's not that long ago. It's no, no. The fact ago. that it's a, a local Rhode Island band, yeah. but still has enough pull to sell out a spot in, on the other side of the country. Right. So that's pretty that's pretty big time. Yeah. But, um, so the traveling, the, ro- the road travel, all of that stuff, going place to place and blah, blah, blah. Were, were there, was there any point of like, I'm sure the dynamic changes you know whenever you're living with somebody sharing stuff with somebody you know in business with people just like we are at some point there's always like tension moments and you know we've gotten into fist fights with each other we've gotten <laughs> like like we've like like i remember there was this one kid that i'm so sorry if he's gonna listen to this but he will he was our merch guy and oh, we, we have and a merch he, guy he didn't fucking believe us but one of the members, Chris, would, like, take his shirts and, like, jerk off and use them as rags. Nice. And he would wear them the next day just because he hated them. <laughs> and he'd be like, dude, there's cum on your shirt. He'd be like, no, it's not. And, like, would put it on. <laughs> Walk around with jizz on his back all day. He was, like, he was getting hazed by you guys. That's so like the, you know, bad. Yeah. Wait, so ma- you told him there was cum I on the shirt. I told him, but he didn't want to believe us. And, and he, he still wore it. He's just walking around with cum on his shirt. It was dried up. It was dried up. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, but I felt bad. dry cum before. He was like, no, this ain't cum. You go <laughs> you want to put your shirt on, dude, and just it's crunchy. Yeah. It's crunchy. Like, what the it's fuck? It's pretty bad. That? It was pretty bad. But, yeah. He's like, no, out of spite, was... I'm letting this cum stay on my yeah. back. Yeah, I don't want to it. It is not that. cum. I'll show you. <laughs> oh, damn. I mean, so, how, how did you train to, so the vocals, being the lead singer, let's say, of mm. Failing Sky, mm-hmm. that's like a hard thing to do to make your voice do that. You know, it's not just regular singing. It's not Frank yeah. Sinatra. It's not, you know, it's like... That I don't even know how to do it or what it is. Yeah, yeah I, screaming. I guess honestly, just like one day, I just like figured it out and I kind of ran with it. And, and they were cool with that, and they were like, "Dude, that's exactly what we were looking for," or whatever. Yeah. Or, well, he, what happened was I was the bass player. This we had two oh, yeah, vocalists. We didn't even talk about you singing yet. Yeah, the two vocalists because we had a singer and a screamer. Yeah. Okay. They just screamer. They, did, they did Yeah, they did not get along. They bought heads. We were uh, so, so get this. Our first yeah, it's trip. Like that, like, Screamo. Music. Our first trip out to California was to do a show record, uh, a showcase for Century Media Records, and we tanked. We fucking failed because our screamer got so drunk he was like jumping from table to table, kicking girls' drinks over, like nice. in the crowd. You know, like what the fuck is going on here? Like you can't perform like no. this, bro. And um, they we we um, got invited out to go see Steel Panther. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that band. No. But it was on Hollywood. You have heard the name. I don't know. It was on yeah, uh, Hollywood Boulevard. Are they the Black Panther? No. It's like... it's like. Are they Black Panthers? No. They are an 80s hair metal band that does a bunch of covers and then like really dirty original songs. Right. But we got invited to go to see this show by Century Media. They let us in VIP. We're in the VIP lounge. And... Um, oh, shit. Are you in that pick? Yeah, I'm in the middle right there. I brought my mother on stage right there. <laughs> Shout out to Carrie. That was this summer, actually. Thank God I didn't start saying weird shit, dude. <laughs> 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 yeah. But, um... All right. That's weird. My so, bad. yeah, we uh, we go to the show, and Dimitri and Kevin, the kids that were in the band, they're just fighting the whole time. Kevin... Just, like, like arguing, like, roommates, like, just, back and I don't forth, even, always... The problem was, Kevin flew his girlfriend out. Kevin got so drunk off of Four Loco that he was running around the streets of North Hollywood. And we had to, like, we would, like, look down an alleyway and we would just see him crying, running down, like, chase after him. And we're like, we got to get to the show. So we left him. And so then he What did he do? What what was his role in the band? He was the singer. And this was, I played bass. He was the singer. And the screamer was also fucking crazy, too. So you guys now have to play a show and... We didn't weren't playing the show. We were just going to meet up with the people. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But they're like Century Media's people, so we wanted to make a good Century impression. Media, is that, is that a big label? Yeah, it's a big record label. So can you, they... Can you see who else they uh, work with? Century Media? Um, so uh, we, we so. leave Kevin, and that's when they started getting into a fight. We left him just in the middle of the road in North Hollywood. They, 
he finally takes a cab to the show. They start like fighting in the street. Dimitri rips his fucking shirt off. Always a sign of somebody that's tough. Yeah. So anytime somebody rips their shirt off, you know they can fight. Hey, Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> he was a tough guy. Um, if they can't fight, they probably won't be able to rip. You know, the shirt. It'll, you'll have to take it off. Do a little snip on the collar. Just I'll in case. Rip anything. Just in case. I'll fucking rip a jean jacket off if you cut it. <laughs> That's why you like wear the button shirts, just so you can pop the buttons. You don't have to really rip just, through a shirt. You just want to snap, snap the snap button so you don't yes, rip, exactly. rip the shirt. You don't want to ruin the shirt. You just you keep the shirt. <laughs> Sorry, you were saying? We got a little sidetracked there. Oh, no. I was just saying like, they got into the fight, and then that was like our first experience on tour. It was just... Shit in terms that was the, the same tour as the Denver where yeah. you guys went. It's yeah. all shitty. Yeah. At this point, are you like questioning your decision here to join this band? Yeah, that's I mean, what I was. They're fighting each other, and it, it, sh- it seems like stuff's not going great for you guys. You're 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 at a, at a place where it smells like you know shit. dead cows and shit. Are you just like, what am I doing here at this point? Well, that's why I had brought that up. The whole shit story, like, because when we got there, that's when I first was like, I don't know if I can do fucking do this. Mm. Sleeping in this fucking van with people, and like, they were my friends, but like. Right. Wait, did you have beds in the van? We had, the whole back was just a big... Open? Open, and then, like, three benches. So we were, like, sleeping, two in the back, and then everyone slept in a bench. Like, on the floor. It was really hard. It was horrible, you know? Yeah, it's, it's not like a Metallica tour bus, no. I don't think. That's no, right. start off, but, I mean, like... You gotta bands, start somewhere, though. And so how long were you doing that? I mean, I still was in a van last tour, but we stayed in hotels every night, you know? Yeah, you get those coins. There's no reason to have a bus money. if you can afford hotels, too, you know? But, um... No, I'm not yeah. saying just driving from place to place. I'm saying, how long did you sleep in the in the van? Is that the um, Century? Yeah, yeah the Century Media. Yeah, they got about hundred artists. Yeah, these nuts. He's <laughs> that, nuts. That, that, is that their name? Can yeah. you think of that? That's a band's name. I played these with them before. Nuts. You played. You with played with these nuts. nuts? Awesome. Yeah, was that? <laughs> cool. He's what like, you, I juggled with them. What do you think of these nuts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They look like these nuts. <laughs> Holy shit, that's great, dude. When's their next tour day? Are they coming anywhere soon? I hope not. Are you I promoting them? <laughs> no, bro. That's, I gotta give them... That's pretty Dude, that's sick. That's rival now. That is his rival. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, we're worried. My bad. No, no. We're just going through the, his, his story. Like, you know... We'll, so how long did you stay in that van for? Like, how many times did you... Uh, well, wait, what happened, what happened yeah. to the, the kid that was... You guys left him behind now? Was, I mean, was, we, we left him at that point? Or no, he, no. We left him behind. They got into the fucking fight. So basically what happened was... We went on two tours, two full U.S. tours, before we had to make a decision. One of the screamers or the singer had to leave. No way to care how to run it. <laughs> we had to kick one of them out. So the singer of the band had this fucking voice. Like, we'll go to karaoke and he'll do Journey and just hit every fucking one. So he's good. He's good. So was that a little, I'm sorry, was that discouraging to you, the fact that he was so good? Did you ever feel like envious, like, hey, I'm not going to be a singer? Well, no, just because I have a whole different style world. than him anyways. Gotcha. I do, like, my singing is, like, more R&B style. Nice. And he's, like, power vocals. Yeah. He's actually got a new band coming out right now called Damnation that's unbelievably good. good. Yeah. Damnation? So good. All right. Damnation, so, so check good. them out. Yeah, Free check club. them out. Get it. And um, so uh, we had to make a choice. We kicked Dimitri out. And that's when Dimitri I became was the, scream the screamer. That's when I became the screamer. Oh, shit. Yeah. 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 So you just went from bassist to I went screamer. to bandless to bassist on tour to being the screamer of the band. And that's nice. when shit got really sick for me. What do you mean sick? It's Good. just going from being the bass player to the singer is a whole different world, you know? Yeah. You know, you get singers, to, singers like the quarterback, you know? Yeah. Like you're, the, you're the guy. You're up there. Right. Now, you guys starting to grow in popularity at this point? No. Yeah, I remember we did. Um, I mean, every tour got a little better, you know? Yeah. Time. Obviously, yeah. But, um... I remember my first tour as a screamer. We toured with this band called Us from Outside, and then we co-headlined. So we're co-headlining. Like, it wasn't like it was just our first tour with like really good bands, decent turnouts every fucking night. And um, I mean, there were nights where we played in front of nobody. So I'm not gonna lie to you. Even still, I'm Wait, still, I, yeah, as a as a failing? Yeah, absolutely. Really? Yes. Are you kidding me? There was there's like. Well, where do you, we go to Montana. Oh, there's nobody Who in Montana. Who fucks in Montana, you know what I'm saying? We played in L.A. to, like, five people. Wow. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Now, how often are you struggle. guys doing shows? We were do, I mean, out of 30 days, we're doing 30 shows. No kidding. So, wait, yeah. when I go on Spotify and I and I see a failing sky and I, uh, or if I go on YouTube and, and look them up and 
Like they have a following. They have a yeah. huge following. Is that band still? Because you're not in the band. They're not together. They're not together. Right. We did a reunion show last year, though. After the first time we played, the first time since 2013, and we played at the Met, and we sold like 300 tickets. Oh, the Met in Pawtucket. Yeah. I we, mean, it's just, that's a dope spot, man. We sold like 300 tickets, and it was a fucking sick show. We each made a couple hundred bucks, and that was it. Yeah, that's a cool place. Laid it's it really, to rest. Yeah, it's a nice little intimate setting, and they get they get big artists in there. Yeah. Hmm. I saw, um, you know who Lee Bryce is? Major country, you know, star. You know, he could probably sell out a place like Madison Square Garden easily. And uh, to be in a room, you know, with only 300 people, it's like you can literally, I'm assuming if you're on stage, you can make eye contact and start to recognize every single oh, yeah. person in there in a room that small. I watched my That's dad walk dope. in. And he's like... <laughs> Approval. <is that laughs> you know, for those listening at so, home, he's doing like a super pumped up face yeah. right now if you're not so, watching this. So you're in Montana, right? And, and you have this show booked. Do you know ahead of time that, I mean, it's going to be a, a dead show? Or are you kind of like, where yeah. the hell is everybody, you know? I mean, no, we have feelings. Yeah. Like, you know. And, like, as big as an internet following may be, you know, there's never, you never know. Like, yeah. I mean, th- for instance, you guys remember Aaron Carter, right? Yeah. Yeah. He'll play a show, to, and it'll be like, Carter. there's like 10 people there. Of course we do. But he's was a superstar. Right. You don't think he could draw a hundred kids? No, he can't nowadays. You know, too much competition. Too much. Just, There's so much. And it's like, very saturated we'll play a show, good. and then down the street, a larger tour package will be there in the same genre. So, it's kids are going to go to that but one. But let me ask you. So, in that genre, though, it, I mean, it, if it was just R and B, like that's a huge genre. Yeah. Rap, huge genre. What, what, what genre do you? Just metal? Is that what you're falling? Post hardcore metal, whatever you want to call it. It's it's all the same. You know. Right. Okay. I, I, you know, when I think of Metallica, that's why that's I think heavy metal that's or something. Or so that's like dad rock. That's like dad. Yeah. Metal, you know, it's like oldies. That's like oldies. But like nowadays, like, like the all like the real like breakdown metal heavy bands. So like, give us what's a band today that's that's like would be fall under fall in your genre of let's say a Failing Sky. Um, fall Out Boy. They still no. Are that's or? that's like pop pop pop, 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 pop punky. Pop, pop, pop. Oh, I don't know. That's like radio rock. But like, like Charlotte, still poppy. No, radio it's still poppy. I guess like you would. Alter Bridge. No, no it, it's like, it's like a whole different. It's like that's it's so underground, but still so like. Do you guys know about Vans Warped Tour? Have you ever heard of Vans Warped Tour? Yes. Okay. Vans the shoe vaguely company, right? right? Yeah. Vaguely, there's twenty thousand people that show up each date, for wow. bands that you guys have never heard of. Interesting. So like to try to sit there and explain to you like oh this that is what it, this is what kind of band you get like, who the fuck is that because yeah. It is so it's underground, mainstream. but it's still so big. Yeah. It's just not on the radio. It's all streams. That's what it is. All the music nowadays is all like streaming Spotify shit. You know? So of all of all the time that you had, you know, on tour, going to shows, doing the shit, being um, as popular as you were, what would you say is like the craziest thing that's ever happened? I want I wanna hear like the goods, man. It's a great question. Right? Mm-hmm. Well like what's the best thing you looking back, being like, Hey, if I wasn't you know, in that band, that shit was never going down. I'm, I'm like, t- I was never having a five some. Well, d- see, you know, I'm. <laughs> Ooh, that never, that just... stuff never really went down as much as you'd think it would. Dude, don't oh, worry, we can block her from listening. <laughs> she doesn't, she doesn't have to hear this part. That never happened. <clears throat> um, if you are Troy's lady, block your ears. There's um. <laughs> I'm, all right, I'm gonna say the Wait, best. Were you ever single on tour? Yes. Let's talk about that. Only tell those stories. <laughs> Only tell those stories. <laughs> Killing me. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, shit. I, all right. You want some whiskey, dude? What's yeah. Give me, give me some fucking whiskey. <laughs> yeah. Jay, you have fucking shit behind you. We were in, I remember, Jay, this I is this, this, end too. Right this there, is brother. a pretty funny one. Um, when we were in Nebraska, we went to Red Lobster, me and Chris, our guitarist. And we go eat, and then we, we meet these people, and they're like, we're having a party tonight, come through. And right. the reason why I said Red, Red Lobster is going to come back in the story, so. I hope so, because these so people, far, these people that so know, far that it's not that new of our band. Is everybody like, in Red Lobster naked? No, that, no. So, so <laughs> we go to the show, we go to the show, we play the show, we go to these people's house, <coughs> and <coughs> we party <coughs> with these people, and we're drinking like crazy, doing keg stands and shit, and then I meet this girl. And we go upstairs, and we start... Upstairs at Red Lobster? No, at the party. Gotcha. Everyone's <laughs> in the basement. We go upstairs. We start hooking up. I finish, 
And I go, I'll be whoa, right whoa. back. Don't be so gross, dude. <laughs> I finished the job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then I go, I literally stop. I go, I got to go. And I go in the bathroom and I start throwing up everywhere, all over wow. this poor girl's bathroom because I got food poisoning from fucking Red Lobster. Oh, but this shit. poor girl thinks I'm sick from her. And she's like, I never spoke to her again. Don't even remember her she's name. Like, wow. And she's just like, she left the party crying because I, I was like, oh god, I threw up everywhere. I'm like, that's oh, awesome. She's god. sitting there like she waiting left for the, the party cum towel, and you're just yakking. Yeah. And I was sick for like, like man, days. that must have been really bad. That's happened to me, but it was the girls ran in the bathroom and they threw up. <laughs> they didn't even make a little it to the yeah. um, It's like that happened to me the first time I was about to get my first blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> I was or also give your in first the bathroom. Yeah, you puked everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Threw up. I couldn't take. <laughs> but so, that's actually pretty funny. That's yeah, it was pretty bad. It was pretty <clears throat> bad. So <laughs> at its peak, failing sky. Where 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 would you say like? How much money are you making? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just uh, not that. Uh, What's your social? I mean, like. <laughs> Did you have? Did you ever have that feeling, like, man, I'm a fucking star, or no, no not that big, or just kind of? I never. I just. I mean, I touring just, the country, that's pretty big. No, my thing was, it's just like I was just every each and every day very fortunate to wake up and do what I did for a living. That's all I thought it. of. Yeah, that's all it I thought of. I, I just like never, I never wanted, I, I never wanted to do music to be famous, right? Or say that I'm this guy. I just fucking love it. You just love music. And it feeds it feeds my inner, like, you know, it's my mm. fuel. And that's, some people... I've, well, it's got to be, that. it has to be that, or else yeah. you'll never make it anyway. Yeah. But, you know, but I then you have imagine. these fucking assholes on SoundCloud that are like, like... Hey, easy, easy. SoundCloud hosted our podcast for the first month. No, that's good, fine. But I'm talking about the rappers. <laughs> SoundCloud's great. I'm talking about the fucking idiot rappers that are on there that are like, I got grills in my teeth, and they're getting like millions of dollars, and they don't give a fuck. They, they just want to no talent. They just want to flex. Can we find the worst SoundCloud rapper. Ugh! They just want to flex and like do all this stuff. And then there's people that are really like passion, and not not taking away from their passion, but like you just don't like the wa- not the wannabe the poses, musicians. Man. Nobody likes posers. Yeah, it's like because they couldn't. They probably don't even know what key their song is in. They probably don't even know what I, they're talking about. They don't know how. Anything. They don't really know the music. Is they just hit, get a hit. Some guy does everything for them because he got a little fam- like a little pump. He gets a little famous, and people write his music now, and now he's a fucking superstar. All right, so you go from you go middle school, your own band, to coming into a failing sky, doing the whole tour, living in a band, blah blah blah. That all ends. It breaks. You know, the band breaks apart. You had a, you said a reunion. Now you're doing your solo gig. Now you, no, 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 now no, you're we, doing a, we, let's not a skip whole. That. Let's not skip, skip what? Yeah, there's a whole bunch sky. more from yeah, the feeling. Yeah, yeah, what happened? How'd you guys so, break up? So, well, what here's happened? so this is crazy. So, Kevin was the singer, and I was the screamer. We were getting into fucking fights. Like there was not one tour that like went. Why were you guys fighting? Just you guys were we fighting each other or fighting fight, other people. We were fighting each other. He oh. didn't get along with anyone in the band. He's actually one of my best friends now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then we just fucking could not get along. It's very different when you're ultimately right. living with somebody. We know? just can't. We can't be in a band together we can't work together but we're best friends like he's one of my best friends but um he uh so uh, before you go move on Jesus. is it because of the music is it because you have different opinions on it's music just, is it <laughs> it's it started over like i remember he doesn't close his eyes when you kiss him what, what's the deal <clears throat> i just just differences like i don't know was it he effort? wanted things to run his way i wanted things to run our way like it was just never we can never agree on things he wanted complete control of some things and mm. I don't know and then he just stopped giving a fuck and would start like playing shows and shorts and shit and like tank tops and we're like did you guys have like a set look you were going for yeah I mean there's always an image that you need to right, stick yeah. with. how do the rest of the, yeah, the aesthetics you know, matter you know we were that. just all set we were fed up were they, like, were they with, with you they were fed up with me they were fed up with him like it everybody was, it was another thing with like who's gonna go Demet- Troy or Chris, Troy or mm. Kevin Dimitri or Kevin, like it was like one of those things again. So what? Do, so like Kevin, the, the last time you played with them, was what? there an actual, you know, like a, like a falling out where you're like fucking them out, or did it kind of just? No, what happened was like Kevin, Dimitri, and Chris, who were in a feeling sky. When we kicked Dimitri out, Chris quit with him because mm-hmm. they were best friends, and they started a new band called The Lives of Breathes. And then Kevin starts filling in for Lives of Breathes. And we're like, 
And Kevin is the other the singer. singer. Right? Oh, oh, here we go. This is gonna be like, tough. Yeah. Yeah. We're like, here we go. We knew it. Next thing you know, he quits the band. Of course. So then. So now the band is left with who? Me. So I am the only. And you. I do both. Now I do both. You were the newest guy in the band. And no, at, at this point, point we had a, yeah. At this point, we had a bunch of new members okay. come in because people. Left. How many people were in the band? I feel a like lot. A lot of people left and just like didn't want to do it anymore. I see four people. Yeah, well, we had six to start, but then when we finished, we had... That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. We had Because it was a full band and then two vocalists. So guitar, guitar, bass, drums, two vocalists. Mm. Then we became a five-piece. I became the only singer and screamer. And then we had a divide of, like, these kids were like, man, I want to play heavier music. And I'm like, I want to play lighter music. And I was like... Because you I, like to sing a little more like vocals and not so much yeah, I don't, instruments. I've always you out. liked to sing. And um, they wanted to go heavy. I was like, well, we need to figure something out. And then. Sometimes it's just better to, you know, like if, if you guys don't share the same vision, you just have to kind of. Yeah. Probably. It was like two days later after we had that conversation, I was like, well, I don't know what to say. I was like, you know what? I really want to make music with you guys. Let's figure something out. I'll go heavy. I don't care. And they're like, oh, sorry, we already found a new band with a new singer. So there was me and my friend Adam. Left in a feeling sky, and we're like, wow, we're over. It's over. It's done. Like, just, just like, like that. that. We All these memories and all these tours, like, that we sucks. did support for Our Last Night, which was a band that I grew up listening to. And we had gotten this new singer, and then he quit, and then I became the singer. And, like, just all this stuff, like, happened so quick. And, um... Wow. So, here comes the ship has sailed, the local band from Connecticut. And they're like, you want to fill in for me? I'm like, sure. So I fill in, we play a sick show up in New York. And then my wheels start turning. I'm like, hey, guys, you want to join my band? Hmm. And they're like, fuck yeah. Because like, now they're going from being a local band to being in a national yeah. touring band. Because you get to keep the name. I get to keep Sky, the name. Right? Oh, I, so you you I, kept the name. I, yeah, at this point, I am a feeling Sky. Like, oh, I'm the one gosh. who kept it going after all. I was the youngest member of the band, and I'm the one. I was like the Axl Rose of a feeling Sky. And I just kept it going after like Axel Rose, because Axel Rose was the only guy left, oh, the only original member left in his band, which is Guns N' Roses. Got you, got you. Wow. Good <laughs> lord, jeez, <laughs> wow. he's such a ball buster. <laughs> no, I don't listen to to rock. I'm very uh, ignorant in that in style of genre. But it was mostly for you the people say. that are listening that don't yeah. know who Axel Rose is, because obviously I do. Everyone knows who Axel Rose is. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I'm like trying to keep it going, and all these, these I get these kids to join, and um, they're like so down. We book a tour. The first tour that we booked back as a, like, as a feeling sky was Canadian tour, and it was sick as oh, fuck. Oh, shit. It was sick in as fuck. In Canada? Yeah. Oh, so, international? Yeah, we were like... So we it was like, a Canadian just, tour in Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> so we had... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Where was the Canadian tour held? Just want to make sure Mexico. I heard it right. <laughs> not a good, not a good example. Why not New Mexico? What? <laughs> we drive all the way up to Canada, and that was. So, we get there, and like we pull up onto Saint Catherine Street in Montreal, and it's like, what the fuck? Was there a lot of geese so, there? What geese? <laughs> not that I can recall. Oh, mm -hmm. geese. Oh, man. <laughs> We pull up but to this place. Maple called... leaves? Like, what the fuck? Everybody's <laughs> playing hockey? Talking, what is everybody man? doing? <laughs> we pull up to this venue called Piranha Bar, and it's like the bar is just a tank of piranhas. Right. And, Sounds uh, like a it's, terrible it was idea. Fucking, they let me stick my hand in there and everything, too. But oh, um, yeah. Did you? Why yeah, would you do I that? I did. I did. And they just swim right up by you. Eat your fingers? No, they're pretty normal. Eat your flesh. <laughs> But the, um, owner, the owner of that bar is like, hey, they're high one night. He's like, I bet you I can convince all people, everybody to stick their hand in this piranha tank. <laughs> Let's do it. But it was cool because, like, it was a dump, like, so the bar, and then, like, you go up this staircase, and the venue was up there. But on the first floor, it was, like, the bar and then a bunch of, like, um, slot machines. So I lost all my money that night. <laughs> <laughs> all my money. That order of that boss, brilliant. Yeah. No, all the bands that come in there, they, they just lose all their the money. Casino. They were like giving us like free fireball shots and shit. That, and that's yeah. when fireball first started becoming like, really popular. So I was like, I've never heard this when, before. When like, Florida this Georgia Line started singing about it. <laughs> yeah, right? It makes sense. So, um, you got some if you want some. No, absolutely not. Um, that shit makes me sick to my stomach now. Probably because of Canada. Mm. But um, no, that it was so sick. And I remember the band we were touring with. They were called Drag the Lake, 
And I remember, like, setting up our merch. And we were, like, a pretty boy band. Like, we had our hair all done. And we had, like, button-ups on. And we all looked nice. And this other band oh, is... Oh, Corona Box. Check them out. Oh. Is that you guys performing there? No, that's not us. Oh. That's their promo video. Where's the Piranha? Oh, all right, Piranha Bar. Yeah, Piranha Bar is sweet. How do they have a promo video with no piranhas in the video? True. Now, uh, George, is our video going to get taken down for this? Will, it, will YouTube fuck with us? Not mm-hmm. pay us? Um, so how far, what, what year is this that you're, you're at uh, in, in this Canada? This is 2013. All right. Where yeah. are you in this image? I'm off to the right. This is see the guy with the mullet? Because I'm looking right at you, and I can't see you. In I have no beard in the picture. You have no beard in... You see the guy with the mullet? I'm right to the uh, left of him. Oh, uh, I thought you were going to tell me you that guy with the mullet. No, right? I did have a mullet before, though. All right. So at this point, you're the leader You're the leader of the band now? Yeah. You're like the alpha? Like you yeah, but it. don't get it twisted. I didn't handle anything else besides getting on stage and singing. Like, right. they did all the business stuff. I just showed right. up. No kidding. Yeah. Why? Why, why did it, it work was, that way? Because I, I, I must run in the family. Here's the thing, like, I got to a point where, like, dude, I feel like, and that's one thing that I regret, is I never took charge, and I always kind of just let things fall into place, because I expect it to happen, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If I would have put more effort into it, I would still be doing it. Been more successful yeah. with it? Yeah. Dude, you know, we all look back, and that's that's usually how it is with 90% of shit that we do that fails. Endeavors. Is because yeah. we didn't give it the effort, you know. Yeah. The attention, the effort. That it needed, you know, yeah. that it deserved to, to get where it's at. But, um. But at least you can realize like, that most yeah, people yeah. Really back bands around. need like an alpha male to run run stuff. And it should have been me. Sure. Sure. You know, they're an alpha. No. I, you know, I, maybe I think you're right. Like somebody just needs to be like they the man. Them. You know, yeah, exactly. The they make the probably. decisions, and then all right, ultimately he makes the decisions on what we're doing. And and because if you have two guys that both think they're in charge, almost like I mean, a manager. Like, or it seems like they, at some point well, they're just gonna bang heads together. And we we did have the management, manager. and we had agents, and all we had that all that stuff. So that's what I'm like. They just I was an artist, and yeah. they took care of that stuff for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's what it is nowadays. But um, we like did that Canadian tour and went really well. We were like sitting outside. We're sitting outside of Piranha Bar, and there's a full contact, full nude strip club. You know the deal. Right next door. You know what to do. What's it called? So you blew all your money in the slot machines in the middle of there. I didn't go to the strip club near Piranha Bar. (laughs) Canadian Canadian strippers on the way. Canadian strip club near Piranha Bar. You can see Troy dancing on the stage trying to make his money back in the slot machines. (laughs) It's a Canadian Piranha strip club. (laughs) I didn't go to the strip club, but this this, this is the story. Bro, you don't. So we're sitting in front of the strip club. I didn't go to the strip club because I had no money, first of all. Second of all. You lost it at the casino. Yeah, it was just like. What kind of story is this? Let me tell you the story. See, yeah, let him tell let you. Let me tell you the story. Mm-hmm. See this guy? Look no. the so, I'm yeah. sitting, Grant or Jamie, two of the members went off and hung out with a couple girls. Of the band? Remember yeah. The band? I stayed back because I had a girlfriend back home, so I wasn't like, good man. You know? Good man. So, I'm sitting there with my with Andy in the front seat, and we got like our sleeping bags, and we're just yeah. watching The Office on the laptop, right? So, we're watching The Office. Show. Yeah, great show. show. Hell yeah. Which episode so, do you remember? Uh, no, I don't. You know what? Actually, I do remember. I do remember. It's an episode where he's like, first the computer crashes with the porn, and now Prinkles, it's like Angela's fucking cat dies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but her name is Pringles, but he calls her Prinkles. <laughs> and now Prinkles? <laughs> and then he's like, the computer crashes with the porn, and you see Jim go. <laughs> like, but, that fucking smug Jim but, um, So we're watching this, and then we just, on the window, and I look over, it's a fucking stripper. Because nice. they stand on the doors and like, come in, come in, That's come in. That's fucking brilliant. Yeah. No, it should be. And she's got no clothes be. on. We're in Canada, in Montreal in January or like end of December. Wow. Right after Christmas. So those nips were like. So she's like, you come in? And I'm like, no. And she's like, open. Now she opens the door. She's like, why are you in your little bag? <laughs> I was in a sleeping bag. <laughs> she's like, why are you in your little bag? And I'm like. Because I'm watching this. She's like, well, come watch this. And I'm like, no, I'm good. No, and then she I'm starts. Fucking solid marketing. She starts unzipping my bag. And I'm looking at Andy and he's like, I don't know. And then she grabs my face and just starts making out with me. How did you think Red Lobster topped this? <laughs> where was, where was this at what part, when we asked you, what was the craziest thing? And you said, <laughs> I'm smelly not, cows. No, wait, hold on. <laughs> How does that top what you're saying? I, I, was just to go, top I thought by you a said that stripper, like I thought you in were, your sleeping bag. That's the best thing. That I thought you were happened. talking about the ride up to the first date. 
is what I thought you were talking about. We're talking about ever. Everything, dude, there's so many stories. Rock star. He's doing it the right way. you got to build yeah. the best one. You don't <laughs> want to start so. off with your best material. There's even people that everybody tunes out. Did I talk about the story when I got jumped in Las Vegas? No, you didn't. See? Well, so by now now again, man. No, so like, we're... Where it's my first time ever in Vegas in 19. We're trashed walking young, down the old strip. Oh, yeah. We're trashed walking down the old strip. I'm a mix. loud mouth fucking, like, you know. I'm just, I just. What are you pointing at me for? Cause, just because you know we're family. Much, yeah, <laughs> you know how it is. Nah, we, know, we know Jay. We just fucking. For just everybody talk. that's listening and doesn't know, Troy is Jay's nephew. Yeah. We just, or not anymore. Troy but. is super handsome and talented, so <laughs> the apple falls way far from the tree. <laughs> So I'm just I talk shit and I'm just like I think I can beat the fuck out of everybody. And that's so my life. When I close my eyes. I don't even know who's saying it. <laughs> when I drink, I think I can bench press cars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> flip a car over. Right. So, so yeah, this yeah, guy comes up to us and he's like, "Yo, what's up, dude? You need some drugs?" And at this point, I was like, "No, man. Like, I don't want drugs." We got, <laughs> no, man. I, don't I, was like, drugs. I was like, "We got weed. Like, we have weed. We don't need shit." No. He's like, "Well, can I walk with you guys?" And I'm like, "Yeah, walk with us." <laughs> so we got this fucking gr- guy like. Like, walking with us, like, drinking a 40, like, chilling. He was like, yo, but like, let me know if you need something. I'm like, bro, stop. Yeah. He pressed me the whole time. I'm playing blackjack. He's pressing me. I'm like, yo, stop. Wow, stop. He followed you in like He's that. following us. Long. And I'm like, yo, if you don't get the fuck away from us. We were, it was my band and another band walking down the ship. So we're 12 deep. Right. Like, you're going to get your fucking ass kicked. And he's like, oh, yeah? All right, I'll see you around. He leaves. Two hours pass by. I hear, hey. oh, <laughs> And I'm like, oh, I'm like yo, what up? So he's like, come here. You said I'm going to get my ass beat. I'm like, all right, here we go. So I'm thinking, now I run towards him. And Adam, my bo- who's always has my back, he's a little guy, but he will, he's a scrapper. Yeah. He runs with me. I'm thinking I got fucking 10 other people behind me. <laughs> they dip into a strip club without knowing that we're going to fight. Oh, my God. So he's like, let's square up. He's got a corona in his hand. I'm like, put the corona down. So he puts a Corona down on a Corona. light post, like you know, like the cylinders, yeah, 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 cement, and then that's yeah, like the, the base of the light post. So that's about this high. Yeah. So he puts it down. I square up all in one motion. He takes it back and just cracks it over my head. Five or six dudes come around like a corner and just beat the shit out of me and Adam. I have a picture somewhere. Beat the shit out of me and Adam. Steal Adam's phone. Um. I wake up and I, I lose my – I get hit. Last thing I remember being on my oh, hands down. and knees and just getting a timbal into the, Yeah, my pants down. No. <laughs> getting a timbal into the fucking mouth. Oof. And then I wake up in a hospital with a spit head. guard over my face tied down to the thing because I guess like I was like spitting and like no, fight, no. trying to fight the cops because I was so disoriented. And then I had to call my mom and be like, hey, mom. And she's like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, my mom's so overdramatic. <laughs> so I'm in a hospital in Vegas. I got jumped. I spit at cops. Yeah. <laughs> Strapped <laughs> out. What are you guys so doing? Yeah. <laughs> so bad. Oh, I, I could keep going. going on for days about all these stories, too. Like, I got arrested in West Virginia for stealing a bottle of water, right? I water was it was like a fucking smart water. And the guy right. comes out this and he's like, Hey man, you steal that? And I'm like, uh nope. And he's like, I he saw asked you if you steal stole yeah. it. I'm like, I, I didn't see it. steal it. And he's like, I saw you and I was like, you know what, man? You're right. I stole it. We're traveling, we're not making much money. This was like earlier on in the band before we could even afford to like buy a do anything. Also, members of the band, I'm not gonna say who, were very stingy with money and would go do things with the money and not let us do things with the money. Oh, that's not being stingy with saying. money, that's being a cunt. Like. Yeah. That's like stealing so, from you, yeah, yeah. yeah. Think of that. So, anyways, should have kicked their ass. <laughs> yeah, you're fighting the wrong people, dude. So, um, that's gonna be one of the biggest problems with bands, though. I mean, oh yeah, how to control the money up? Yeah. 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 I mean, that's what we needed a team, and we didn't have a tour manager. We were trying yeah. to do it our own. Is that what? But now you have a tour manager, you need to pay an extra check, right? But um, so I steal this bottle of water, and he catches me. I'm like, look, yeah, I stole it. I haven't opened it yet. Please take it back. I'm on the road. He's like, nope, already called the cops. So I run oh, to God. the fucking van to Give get in. Give me a fucking break. I run to the, to the van. It was, it was Fiji water, though. I mean, it was smart water, yeah. So I run to the van. He comes up from behind me and shoves me into the van. I turn around. I fucking punch. I'm not. It, I'm from the fucking East Coast. Yeah. Don't fucking oh. put your hands on me. <laughs> Like, You're lucky you didn't shoot your ass. I know, but like, I'm, like <laughs> if you put your hands on me, I'm going to yeah. fucking turn around and punch you. Tan, he might have mistaken. There's <laughs> like no southern hospitality in your blood. <laughs> yeah. I'm fucking, I hit him. So I fucking hit him and the cops come and the cops like, Kevin and Adam are like, what's going on? I'm fucking just like, 
just mm. white in the face. Like, what the fuck? And they're like taking me in cuffs and they look at fucking my band and they're like, he's going away for a long time. <laughs> I just told <laughs> really? My bail was like $1,500. All on my 20th birthday. And I'm a leap year, so I only get a real birthday every four years and it was landed on my real birthday. I wake up in so jail. So your birthday is on so the 29th? Yeah, February, February 29th. Yeah. I've always wanted to yeah. meet somebody. That yeah. Yeah. Did you get arrested for like assault or for Assault and petty, yeah. petty larceny. Jeez. So I do that and I wake up in jail and they I'm I'm fucking 19 years old about to be 20 freaked out scared dudes are barking at me as I'm being walked in and then they let me like talk to the band they're like do you have anything to say to your band I'm bawling I'm like it's fucking really scary in there man <laughs> and you know like they all start dying laughing <laughs> they all just start dying laughing like, but I'm getting sympathy from but me. I fucking get in there and the guys are cool we're gambling for juice packets so. And I remember, like, when I got, when I posted bail, I was like, oh, oh. like, we were, like, in the middle of a game. It was, like, getting picked up from daycare. <laughs> like, I was like, ah. Oh. So let's get into your gambling addiction. Oh, there's no gambling addiction. <laughs> it runs in the family. <laughs> so now, so this was still a failing sky, right? This is all, all these stories are all a failing sky. Damn. Yeah. Interesting, man. So you guys had some highs, bro. That was cool shit. There's this lady in, uh. San Antonio. I'm not going to say her name. That but anybody is that is listening, children. Sh- anybody that is listening to this podcast that knows me or was in the touring circuit knows exactly what I'm talking about. And I'm going to have to delete her off Facebook so she doesn't hear this. But she would have the she would house bands, okay. And her f- her son was a fan of our band, so they come to the show. We show up later, and she's got coolers full of beer, a spread of food crazy amounts of just like weed and alcohol and all this stuff so the first time we go we get hammered whatever second time we come through on the next tour she's like let me guys know if you need anything else and i'm like what do you mean what else can we need what, like what do you mean she's like follow me fucking twirls her little robe so we go up <laughs> so we go belt. upstairs right and, and she she's, knows and she's now there's like beer and all this everyone she just pulls out this much cocaine. Let's go. Now we're getting this, this much, and it's just like bright yellow, like raw. We're in San Antonio. Hold on. Let's talk about the smelly cows thing. Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's raw cocaine. Go on his Facebook page. Look for somebody from uh, San Antonio. Where, where was she from? <laughs> I'm not telling you. <laughs> She's like, so she. T- oh, there's the picture right there of Where's Vegas. <laughs> Yo, it's solid. My man is a G for finding. Look why he's smiling. He's got whoop. Yeah, that's when I first woke up. You look like you're hungover and happy that you're alive. Yeah, yeah. So I got my shit face. rocks. <laughs> there it is. Jesus. You look young as fuck in yeah. that picture, man. I was 19. Oh, my God. He's like, I made it. <laughs> I'm alive. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a <laughs> profile picture right there. Yeah. Oh, for sure, dude. We can get that on a t-shirt for you. So these girls, this lady brings me into a room. She pulls out the cocaine, and I'm just like, at this point, never done it before. But I'm like, let's go. Let's do this. I want to yes. fucking pour it. So she starts breaking up. She's like, you can do as much of this as you want on one That's condition. stupid. On one condition. Like, what? She's like, you got to fuck me. I'm not. She's 45 years old. Cut to scene. <laughs> yeah. <I'm just> throwing, <laughs> so like, it was oh, really oh, weird. Al Pacino. <laughs> it was really, it was so weird. And it was, I was not into it. And she was like, just, I just felt like I got taken advantage of. But she goes... <sighs> She goes like this. She goes. You all the coke you want. I, I did. Women. I did. Just the way. You're she like just, one of those seventeen-year-old assholes that turned to children for blow. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't real. do that. Like I'm just saying, it was just. She was just very aggressive, and I just was like, "This is." She was just weird, and when it finished, she was like, "Thank you for this gift," and I was just like, "This is." Really weird. fucking weird. Do you have more of that, no, please? I mean, you poor dude. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you poor guy. <laughs> I was like 19 and she was like 45 and her kid was in the next room. Her kid is like a little older than you. Yeah, it was just weird. It was just weird. He's like, my mom banged the guy for me. You're like, that that wasn't me on there. That was her son (laughs) that she had nine months later. (laughs) Good Lord, man. Well, that's that's interesting Yeah, a lot of fucking, a lot lot of experiences, dude. Crazy experiences. And you know what? When you're you're that young and, you know, you're experiencing it, it's like you just think you're on top of the world. Like, dude, this is fucking Nothing could kill me. Are you kidding me? No, bro. Nothing. There was nothing. We have like 75 subscribers and that's how I feel. (laughs) There was nothing. What? Why'd you laugh? I was just... (laughs) (laughs) I just thought, like, I was like, definitely thought I was invincible. And, um... It was it was crazy and like still even touring like last year and 
I've been touring for, I stopped touring for a while and then something happened pretty traumatic and I was like, dude, what am I fucking doing here? Yeah. I got to get back on the road. And I did that for another three years and those times were fucking sick. I wasn't playing. I was working for bands now. Way more money, way higher. Prestige, um, maybe a little. I mean, I mean, more, just more, like probably more of a guarantee, like more of a. Dude, I was making just stability. chilling, just chilling, doing nothing really, making five hundred dollars a week, just being gone on okay. vacation, pretty much. That's what it was, and it was pretty cool just to just do that and not have to spend any of the money because I'm getting everything paid for anyways. Food, drinks, all that stuff is already paid for, so I'm literally just taking that money Pocket. and pocketing money. Yeah, there you go. You know. Hey, if I could find a way to do that, just you know, you know, you sounds go. like a. So, but yeah, that, I'm glad. I'm glad I got to experience touring at a h- even higher level than I was touring at with Phoenix right. Guy through other bands. And it's funny what because band were you working with? Can you say? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it was like this band, Slaves. Who? Yeah. <laughs> next. No, no. They're, next band. We're not that kind of podcast. No, th- it's just a band called Slaves. There's no. Um, but um, they weren't actual slaves. There. Um, what was your biggest show? At the plantation. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, their manager is my was Harry a Tubman guy's manager. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. <laughs> Go ahead. <man. laughs> Sorry. Um, their manager was a feeling feeling guy's manager, and he brought us oh, up. So yeah. then once. He got with that band. He he would always find jobs for me to come out with him on the tour. So like I would work for this band called Outline and Color doing merch, and then I did another it's merch Call of Duty merch. Outline and Color. Oh, Outline doing and Color merch. doing merch. Gotcha. And then this band Out okay, and the Wolves doing merch. Then I was a driver for this. You say band. doing merch? You mean like selling their selling their merchandise? Yeah, yeah, yep. yep. Nice. And like this last band I did, Ghost Town, which was the <clears> worst <throat> experience ever. It was fucking awful. They treated me like shit. But um, they would sell like over a grand in merch a night. Wow, it was insane. But um, that tour ended. So I got hired as their driver, and then the fucking singer goes and fucks some girl in the merch girl's bunk. The merch girl leaves for the tour. She's like, "Fuck this! I don't want some kid fucking a girl in my bunk." So then, like, do you want to do merch too? So now I'm driving. So now he's going to fucking your boat. Now he's going to fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's, That's a both they words. asked me to do the merch. So now I'm driving full time and doing merch. Like I can't even stay awake while I'm driving because I have no time to sleep and drive the overnight drives. It's like awful. And it was like always like when it came time to pay me, oh, well, we don't have it. And then he's like spending $400 on hookers. Like it was That's so annoying. Wow. He's got his shit together now. Like he's getting bat- better, but like he had a problem. That's and um, what year is this? This is 2018. Okay. All right. Oh, that's recent. This is recent. Super recent. Yeah. So we're at the last day of the tour. We're in the green room, and he comes up to me and he's like, "Hey, man, uh, we're gonna have to wire you the rest of the money because um, we don't have it." And I'm like, Are you gonna "I wire said, it? I, and now at this point, at this point, I still have to drive them. I, we're in Arizona. I still have to drive them back to LA and then fly home." And he doesn't have my flight booked for me yet. I'm not paying for my flight. You're, I'm work like, yeah, right, right, yeah, You're yeah. paying for my flight. Like that's not mm-hmm. how it works. So he doesn't have my flight paid, and he still owes me a grand. And he's like, "Here's two hundred bucks." Oh my God. And I'm like, "Hey, listen, find your own way to fucking L.A. I'm staying here. Fuck off. Mm-hmm. Fuck off." He was, he was like, "Well, give me all the uh, money in your pocket because I had merch money. Mm-hmm. That's not my money. Right, so right. I just went like this. I made threw it, it in the air." I threw it in the air and he just fucking starts punching me in the mouth. And I'm sitting here. So I start standing up and then his boy comes in, the, t- the tour manager of the camp that I'm working for. They both start jumping me. I fall over a table onto a girl. Oh my God. Dude. And now they're beating me up on top of this girl. I'm trying to like make sure that she doesn't get hurt. Right. I like slipped a disc in my back. I got really fucked up. I ended up taking their whole guarantee that night and made their manager wire me money. But um, they got thrown out of the venue they were like fuck this <laughs> Sinjin grabs their merch and just throws it in fucking puddles what's Sinjin Sinjin's the tour manager of Slaves I'm like what Sinjin <laughs> they're actually in the UK right now <laughs> Slaves oh we're, we're yeah they're pretty big yeah they're it's pretty so they're big. doing really they're playing like sold out shows every night fucking rocky world to be in man yeah. in a rock style life yeah it's just wild mm-hmm. so now you so do now now you're doing solo gigs now I'm doing solo whole different genre yeah like how do you go from screaming <laughs> To 
R and B style kind of weekend. I've always been an R and B guy. You said that yeah. earlier. Like you always, always. like I, be a little more. I've always been able to sing like that. Yeah. Like what? Like just do the trills with my voice and what's, like like what style of R and B? If you could compare yourself to any artist, who was that cover that you just recently did? I um, did a cover of Mario. That's right. Yeah. Mario. Oh, Mario. Yeah. Like, like, song. I like Mario. Let me love you. Like the old throwback. Oh, I know. That's yeah. That's a good jam. But um, I, I mean, I couldn't really compare. Yeah, I couldn't really compare myself to anybody because I don't really like try to sound like anyone with my solo music, you know. Right. I just kind of do my own thing. But if someone now wants to that, that, I mean, I feel like you were talking about producing, or? going on tour with a band. Like you said, you know, you have a supportive girlfriend, but some girls can't handle when you're on band. As an R and B singer, I feel like chicks are just throwing their pussy at you. I mean, I've got, <laughs> I've gotten to play a couple shows on tour. you're just like singing these love songs to them and it's just like, yeah, panty drop it. I mean, I've gotten to play a couple shows. There comes a point where you're over <clears> it though. <throat> Do you know what I'm saying? Like you don't... Over I, what? Over, over what like aspect? The, just like, I, there's no, there's nothing attractive about a girl going to a show and oh, going know. nuts. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just, I respect them. I would hate it. Yeah. So they, you know, like I don't, I don't find fun in just Somebody throwing girl. themselves at you. So this girl throwing at herself. At, not that it happens all the time, because it doesn't. Right. But I'm saying when it does happen, I just it's like how many shows do you go to and do that? Right. And I respect you as a woman, so respect me as a man when I say no. Yeah. You know what, what I'm saying? Fucking smart PC answer, bro. I like yeah. that. So I'm not saying it's not the truth, but yeah. good answer. I feel like you're on Family Feud and everybody would clap and that would be number one. <laughs> good answer. I just good yeah. answer. Good answer. It just gets to, it gets to a point where it gets old. And now, survey says nowadays you need to be fucking like really as a man today. There's so much shit, and I don't know if you guys agree with me. But like, men are fucking shitty nowadays. Like, you see all this shit in the fucking news of like these artists raping girls and like all this stuff. And like, I want to be that guy that, that rapes girls. That, no, that can like. Set Jesus, set apart and be like there are actually still good guys out here that like aren't male, fucking no matter feminist. if you're in the culture or not that's yeah, what you're saying like, like there's, a male feminist yeah not even like that but like respecting women respecting and like their boundaries calling and calling out, out pieces of shit like fuck hmm. Chris Brown fuck R Kelly Rape, well, definitely fuck R Kelly well, Chris girl. Brown didn't he punch Rihanna he punched Rihanna or? he's fucking like I hold on hold on hold on hold on. Pretty sure we talked recently, and you said you would have no problem beating the shit out of a woman. <laughs> Whoa. Hold on a second. 100% full force, the same as a man, yes. was what came out of his mouth. Hold on. What? Hey, <laughs> yes. wow. I gave the story of don't, this. Don't no, hold on. Yourself, no, 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 no. Hold on. I don't. No, 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 no. Don't try to paint me with that brush. You beat this bitch if ass a, with that brush. Listen, yeah. <laughs> it's in if, her ass. If there's, a, if, there's a, if, there's a, if there's a bitch the size of Mike Otten that's coming after me or trying to hit me, I'm going to lay her fucking ass out. <laughs> I don't give a flying fuck. Now we're talking about. No, you're talking about. Him. No, hold on, Before wait. Will you not let me finish? Don't want to hit you. No, 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 no. Ass, bro. If I'm on stage and some girl's throwing her panties at me and blah 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 blah, and she fucking gets all upset and yada, yada I ain't gonna gonna go cold clocker. I'm not Chris Brown. I'm not fucking. Why you know, is Chris Brown beating his fans up? No, no he's, he's just, just beating like chicks raping, up. That's what I'm like saying. Raping girls and shit. Oh, I thought shit. we were talking about because he beat up Rihanna. No, just in jet. See, look at this. Back in the uh, Paris room. Oh, this guy's. Ooh, he's a loser. What a schmizzuck. <clears throat> there are some gangster ass chicks out there that don't give a flying fuck. Like Lil' Kim? Like Nicki whoever. Nicki Minaj will fuck you up. Like I'm not about to let, I don't she give a shit if it's a woman, a, a sheep, a dog, a fucking, my mom, my, my dead dad. I don't give a fuck who it is. Nobody's putting their hands on me and hurting me. Your dead dad's definitely not doing that. <laughs> well, if he decides to, I'm going to fucking lay him out again. <laughs> <laughs> It's probably not going to happen, though, like a girl my size coming after you and attacking you. It actually happened to me. Really? Jesus. Yeah. If you if you, you listen to the, I think it was the last episode, I, I got into a rumble, just to make a long story short, at McDonald's, and this <laughs> big, this big bitch behind yeah. me fucking hit me, and I turned around, I didn't hit her, what? and I hate it. I hate the fact that I didn't hit her. I should have laid her out. Kick her right in the pussy. Wow. Let's not get crazy. <laughs> But I mean, if you have to to stop some big bitch like that, I mean, if some girl, if someone who's bigger than you, throwing that b word like this guy, man, just calling these women bitches. Just told you she's a big bitch. That's what she was. Damn. Also, I was raised by like like my dad, Jay Brown. (laughs) My dad's great. Like he's he worked fucking hard. He made sure we had a roof over our heads. He's a good guy. But he was gone a lot. He was in the military. He was doing his own thing. And my parents split. So I was around. My mother, my sister, my grandmother, and to watch these 
women be strong and like really like keep this whole thing we call life yeah. together. So you had a good perspective I just on how, have how re- strong women respect. are. Respect. Respect. Yeah, there's you know a thing. That's how it is. Because a lot, a lot of people, not even just women, whatever, they could they could be like, hey, fuck this. This is too hard. Yeah. I don't want to do this. And there's moments where you believe, like my mother has been through the ringer, but like there's moments where she's like, I fucking can't. But somehow she always does, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, yeah. women are definitely up. You know so, what I noticed it the most, man? It's going to sound silly, and I'm not shaming any any chicks that, you know, don't breastfeed or decide they don't want to, but with my two kids, I have two kids, and when they were younger, and, you know, we decided that we, you know, and I shouldn't say we, but I, I want to have the kids breastfed, obviously, because, you know, it's better for them long term, right, yeah. you know, better nutrients, cognitive um, development, all that shit. And I saw her, you know, uh, my girl Sasha trying to breastfeed the babies, and you could just see the pain that she was going through, like the lack of sleep, the exhaustion. There'd be times where she was actually in tears because it hurt so bad. She and shouldn't eat the fruit, man. This was, dude. This was like you know over <laughs> months and months and months. But like to see her just continue and go through that just for the sake of. It being a little better for her kid. Mm. You know what I mean? I feel like, to me, I'm probably yeah. throwing in a towel, you know? Yeah, well, of state, course. Men, to state, I mean, like, we, enough. we can openly state that, you know, men, and, obviously men and women are just totally different when it comes to nurturing a child. Plus, that grows in them, you know? They have a different really connection. A thing. I think that's that shows to, like, their willpower and their ability to just keep fighting through a really shitty, you know, well, adverse situation. put it this way. In a time, let's say, of war... Or whatever, uh, I think a male might have that same kind of uh, determination. Like you see guys walking around, bullets flying. They don't give a flying fuck. Yeah, maybe. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a, it's just a, in, applied in a different capacity. So I, I'm not, I'm them. not taking taking anything away from. No, women. I agree with you 100. percent Yeah, I mean, you get guys working in coal mines back in the day for 15 hours a day, and they're, oh, yeah, they're yeah, doing yeah. it for their family. They're not doing it for fun. They're doing well, it to provide for their yeah. family. So now with it, Trump, it goes both ways. I agree. It, 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 it does go both ways, in, in very, you know, in a, obviously again different capacity. But I know exactly what you're saying, yeah. Troy. You you revere your mother, and and oh, you yeah. you look back and you look at her, and you're like, man. She pulled me through, like even oh, though yeah. shit was rough, even though shit was, didn't go, you know, the fairy tale lifestyle. Never, not once did it ever go the fairy yeah, tale. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, you know, what, it never does, no yeah. matter how old you get, you know, whatever. Yeah, it might. I mean, you, I mean, you, I, you could be seventy and look back on your life and think of it as a fairy tale. You I look back now and think it. about like I literally lived my dream. Yeah, I got to do everything I ever set out to do. Young too, you young. Know? So, so you now still... I still have the rest of my life. And who says I don't put a song out that goes big? You know? Can you give us a little note? A note. I don't know. A little I sing on the show. You little da da da. Pompous jerk. Yeah, you pompous jerk. <laughs> Asshole. They still need the mic. Yeah, yeah, you need the mic. It's all right. No, it's I just don't know what I was saying. Yeah, why you put him on the spot? Like Wait, where to put him on the show spot? Us a dick? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Can you show me? Sing me a note. Can you like? Can you, you show me your dick? <laughs> I wanna kiss you all over. <laughs> No, but I mean, you, you put out covers that you do. You just put out one the yeah, other day on Smoothie. I, yeah, and, blah, and I blah, blah. fucking deleted it 20 minutes later. Because I'm going to put the man on the I'm like the biggest, see. like, critic of myself. And I'll tell you, I'll get on stage in front of 2,000 people. But a room like this to sing is way more nervous. I know. I, that, like, that makes I sense. Know. <laughs> that that, that, that actually, doesn't well, this isn't like a singing atmosphere. You know what no, I mean? Yeah, when I, when I hear to see you. The acoustics aren't really good. When you go to a show, they had to hit the hey, you sing. You know, when you come over to somebody's house, like, hey. Why don't you sing for us? I think the best thing is is if we just turn the camera on Troy, he sings a note, and then all of a sudden boxers are get he gets hit in the face with boxers. <laughs> you can do all the cocaine <laughs> under one <laughs> condition. <laughs> we have George go for the boxers get progressively bigger. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh shit! So that's great. So, are are you still booking? Are you still booking like solo? Yeah, things let's say in Providence or wherever. Plug, or let's let them plug that shit. You know at the end. Yeah, sure. We're done. I I as of right now no. No. You I, don't? Play, I played a show. See how that one in December. Mm-hmm. You feel good now, Jim? <laughs> I played a show in December. You with slaves. slaves. <laughs> they came through. I opened up. And it was cool. My backtracks went in the middle of the fucking set. What are backtracks? Like synth, and like right, um. Let me uh, elaborate. What is synth? <laughs> synth. You don't know like what a synth is? Synthesizer. Nope. Sorry, like, man, I'm like a synthesizer, like a keyboard. Yeah, that like makes huge different noise. noise. I think fucking Ross plays in the next Explain it to me like I'm a five year old. <laughs> it makes <laughs> just like just synth, bass drops, harmonies. Because I don't have a backup singer, so it's like my voice. But are you trying like, to get into like, it again? Like, yeah, I mean, I still no, not auto tune. No. So it'll be like I'll sing like ah, uh, 
and then there's like a track behind me that's like ah. So it's like just a harmony of my voice. Okay, I get it. So it's just. But it's still your voice. Playing. But it's not throughout the whole track. It's just through certain parts. Like when there are harmonies that I did in the song, gotcha. that's when they're there. They're live because I want my live show to sound exactly like my recordings. Right. Mm. You know. Cool. So it's a whole production. That goes into that shit. And I've got, although I'm a solo artist, I still have a drummer and a guitarist that play with me. So what's tomorrow bring? Like, I go to work. No, not, not exactly. Yeah, what I'm just... saying like, where, where, what is your next step? Do you have a plan as far as your music career? Like, no. Right now, cool. I'm trying to just, I'm trying to work and I'm trying to shit. go back to school and do like some real life shit for once. Mm. Wow. Nice. Once. Yeah. That's what I'm We're trying to do for now. Pace. But there's always room for music and to yeah, be creative. Hell yeah. I just, if someone bu- wants me to play a show, I'll play a show. But I'm not going and looking for it, you know? Because, like, I find, like, now, obviously, I've never done what you, you've done, but I fuck around the guitar and I sing and whatever, da, da, da. I find it's a release for me. Like, I, you know, like, when I'm feeling like shit, sometimes if I just play and, nice. you know, Yeah, that was whatever. the last show I just played. Was that Slaves? Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Yeah, man. Look at that. Troy Ray. Right yeah. on that fly, baby. Yeah. Big. So do you so do you do you play the regular guitar? Do you, do you or yeah. do you is it just solely bass? And... No, I play guitar. I started off playing guitar. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Air guitar. Yeah. I started off playing guitar and then I picked up bass. And uh, then I started singing. I kinda I don't really play as much guitar as I used to and I'm pretty bad now. From know? from everything you said, it seems like you're you know, your passion is to be on vocals, you know. Yeah, saying? that's always yeah. been my thing. But I like the fact that I can play a little guitar. Yeah, here, it's you know? cool that you have that, you know, yeah. ability. Maybe a little acoustic set or something yeah. in there. Yeah, it's cool. But yeah. um, I wouldn't want to play bass or guitar in a band anymore. I don't blame you, bro. I don't blame you at all. But I always have, have music. But right now I'm just trying to, like, get my my home life really just, like, I just want to stack money. And, ability. And get, like, I have my own place and I have everything and, like, like the girlfriend in the car and all that stuff, but I want more balling. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, not even ball. I just want to be fucking comfortable. comfortable, right? Yeah, yeah. To so be like, like we just went to on vacation to Daytona, and it like set us back like three weeks. I don't want that to be a thing, you know. I want to be able to go to Daytona and come home and still be fine. And then go to Daytona again. Yeah, and then go to Daytona again. Mm-hmm. We stayed at this yeah, sick absolutely. resort. It was awesome. Have you ever thought about like, let's say, do it, booking some kind of something on the vacation, like go down there. It's just so yeah, that's, hard. That's a it's really just cool so thing hard. to sell to the wife, too. Hey, honey, we're going on vacation. You get there, you're just on tour the entire time. Yeah. Well, not on the entire time. I'm saying just to make some extra ducks while you're down there and, you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, but, like, when I'm out, I just want to, like, relax, chill, yeah, yeah. eat some fucking seafood. It's work at that point. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I get it. But it was cool. It was a good time. Hell. But, yeah, just trying to do my thing now with life. Life just is happening so fast. And, like, in 2016, I lost my sister. And that was fucking oh, yeah, that killed me. So that's when I started touring again. But then I started getting back into drugs, and like that fucked me up even more. Just like so, I'm like fine, and I'm working construction, and then I like lose my sister, and then I start doing drugs, which is funny because that's Ironic. how she died. Yeah. But so I'm just like doing drugs all the time, going on tour, being sober for like 30 days, coming home and completely destructing myself. And it's just like a vicious cycle. And now I'm just like... We actually had, um, I don't know if you heard, but a couple of episodes ago, we had a recovering addict who now is sober and he runs marathons. Like regularly. Yeah, I watched that yeah. one. Yeah. 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 Cool. What was his name? Was Maurice. 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 Yeah, I was just Marathon Marvel, Panda. But... Shout out to the kid. Marathon Panda Maurice. But yeah, it what just, up? I found myself in just like a really weird place. And this is recently. Like, this is... Right now, I'm still... What's the date? We came right in. today. In three three days, I'm gonna be thirty days sober. Oh shit! Yeah, man. so it's still new to me. Good Clean, looks. not sober. I'm still drinking. No, I'm drinking. <laughs> I'm drinking. I'm just not That's doing, bad thing. doing drugs. The other we stuff. The, yeah, we got yeah. a few more. on the show, and he's I never did anything that. fucking like. I never. He's like, yeah, I smell the whiskey, and it kind of reminds me of what it used to be like. We're like, shit. No, idea. I never. Um, I I never put a needle in my arm. I just did massive amounts of cocaine. <laughs> That's what I did. And now I'm just I'm staying away from it because I can't drug, man. So I'm just focusing on work. I feel strong, ready to go. Good show. Yeah, That's good. awesome good show. Yeah, that was awesome. So, awesome. It's awesome. hard because I'll go like I would go like two weeks and then fuck up for a week and then go two weeks and just fuck up for a week. Yeah, that's how. I and this is the first time since I came back. I went to rehab a few years ago. Wow. 
Word. That's how bad this was. That must I went to rehab. Shit. It was fucking sick. It was a whole experience that built my mind, body, and soul. Like, and not even trying to be corny. Like, it was a great experience. Everything from going Can't even imagine, and meeting like, all these people and just like. Well, because now you're you're with people that share everything. Yeah, that you're great. Those I loved every sharing. second of it. I loved Good it. stuff, dude. And, cool. uh, but um, from the second I came home from that. There wasn't a span of time where I went two weeks clean. You know, met back in 30, 30 days. All out myself. What's the yeah. biggest thing? What's your biggest like kind of trigger that you're like, is it out partying? Is it drink? Is it the drinking? No. Is it Uncle stress? Is it? It's 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 numbing feelings. It's like when I don't want to. Like, doesn't numb you. Yeah, it does. Does I mean, it? Fuck I mean, yeah. I thought it, it like gets fucking. It just masks. It masks. Because hey, when, hey, leave this to us. <laughs> let a, let us handle this conversation. When <laughs> I did. When I do it, I would just do whatever the fuck, like, I would just, like, disappear for all night and just fucking keep doing drugs and, like, yeah, dude. it just destroys your brain. So, the only thing you're thinking about is doing the drugs and you're not thinking about, wow, oh, my sister's gone, wow, my life's falling apart, my girlfriend's about to leave me, I'm not in the band anymore. You know, it's just, like, all those exactly. things that I still, to this day, haven't dealt with. You think I dealt with my sister passing? Fuck no. You think I deal with the fact that I can't go on tour anymore? No. Yeah. I just each day it's one day at a time. You know? Well, fuck it, man. Like yeah. you said, it's not over. It's like it's not like this. Is not still. No, it's not. Anymore. It's just there right now in my life. It's just. And hey, I mean, sh- shit. You're out there getting exposure again. You know what I'm saying? We got you here, but yeah. Just uh, when you make it big again, don't forget about us. Right. Shout out to the J Squared Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, um, that that's your niece, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. That's why when you mentioned that was a big hit too for the family as a whole because you know know? the father died too. My dad, yeah, like right, what three months, four months later. Yeah, it was rough. It was real rough. You know what? The 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 roughest part too was like I just became recluse. That was how I handled it. I'm just like I don't want to do shit, and I'm still like you know. It was so funny. Like it's just like how cynical, like my (laughs) my family is. Like I remember like dying laughing at like her services, like looking like. At, I know. At this guy and my dad. My dad's standing there inside with sunglasses on. <laughs> like, I'm just like, what is he doing? He's like, what's up? And then they, like, pulled me, told me to, like, put my dick away because my pants were on too tight. <laughs> my dad's like, <laughs> wait, my dad's like put your dick away. <laughs> like, at my sister's services. <laughs> what did you say? I was oh. like... <laughs> no, like when you put your no. dick away, yeah, because it looks like you you painted on your pants. But I hit him with that like six year old clap back with you put my dick away. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly how we no 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 word of a lie. That's exactly how we were though. When you know when my dad died, people, what did he yeah. say? He was like he was like your daughters are here. And he's like I don't see Jay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, he said the nurse was asking my father like you know because he was like in and out like he was going unconscious. Like do you have any kids? And he goes, yeah. He's like, uh, man, I can't even remember the story. Something to the extent of, yeah, I have two sons and two daughters, and something to the extent of like, oh, I, I think your your uh, your daughters are showing up. And then he goes, who? Jeff and Jay? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like even in his in his dying moment, my father's cracking jokes. So funny. So I always remember it. him being like the funny, like I, from a little kid. He was like, let's go to Foxwoods. We can pick up some foxes. And I'm like, fuck, like, going with, like, this kid, like, thinking we're going to, like, go, go find on. foxes. But he's talking foxes. about freaking women. <laughs> like, <laughs> so funny. Troy, you a pass fan? Uh, guaranteed. Nice. Die hard. My man here was at the send-off today. Oh, how was that? Oh, 35,000 people. Yeah, it was amazing. 35,000. What, like? what, what was it like? The team mm-hmm. was there or what? Brady. Well, I was basically, um, oh, still here. they brought everybody onto the field. They had the stage set up and... The Blue Man Group was there. Yeah, oh, that's dope. Yeah, Blue Man Group performed. No, they had the cheerleaders, of course. They had like Foxborough High School band play, and then you know they brought out uh, Scott Zolak. He's like the. Is, is that expensive to go to like? No, it's the, free. Free. Oh, it's free. Just free, yeah, free admission. Free there must parking. have been hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah, it was thirty-five. Thirty-five thousand people. Holy estimated shit! That. <laughs> it's like, like, must have been. It million. started at ten. I we got there at just before seven. I knew it would be a lot of people. People were lined up at 2.30 in the morning. People are crazy. Like, really? Patriot fans are nuts. Yeah. So we, we go You guys aren't that diehard. I mean, my, my son really wanted to go. I mean, I'm not, I, I wanted to go. So I went. It was a great time. We got we got up pretty close. So they brought out the Patriots commentator. He hosted it. Scott Zolak. And then um, they brought out, like, 
Unicorns, yeah. rainbows. Yeah, yeah. unicorn yeah. show ponies. Yeah. Where's the beef? Yeah, See, I get nervous. Where's the beef? What do you say? Where's the beef? I get nervous in crowds like that. That's a lot of people. And I just like, like yeah. a bitch. I, I don't really, but I gotta admit, like when when they let everybody out, it was the, the whole field was full. Yeah, and they had like a twelve foot exit for everybody to like bottleneck into, and oh. it, and it, 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 it actually, sure for balance, a little while, man. I was like, Jesus Christ, there's nowhere to move. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But, no, it was a great time, man. They brought the owners out. The owners talked to the crowd. Bob Kraft, they brought out Tom Brady. He talked to the crowd, you know. And then they got on the buses and they went to the airport. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. Nice. We had a great time. We made it on TV. The news was, like, into, oh, yeah, interviewing I saw, people. I saw that video of you on and, the news. Uh, we made it on the you news. You were on the news? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, they, they interviewed you? Well, they, 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 they came over to us and they're like, oh, we're going to go live in, like, about a minute. You know, we're going to say, uh, you know, we're here, we're here with the Patriot fans from Rhode Island. Can you make sure you guys are loud? You know? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Practice for tonight. Let's go. You know, screaming cool. and yelling. So. I'm so excited. Yeah, it was, it yeah, was awesome. Dope, dude. We've, we've been Isn't it crazy? Pats. Absolutely oh, yeah. insane. Oh, there he is. Let's peep the video of Mike. There, there I am. Is that the picture? Of the, the one in the blue? Still shit. <laughs> I thought you said it was the Blue Man Group, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that guy right there is like a famous Patriot fan. His name is Silver Bullet. He's at he's at all the games. You know, he paints his face silver be and Fat Bullet. Yeah, he's he's, he's, he's a big That's boy. Confused silver to his light. He's a big boy, but uh, yeah, it was a great time today. Um, like I said, my son, he he was pretty is that excited. Your son in the uh, green jersey. Yeah, my son got the uh, Tom Brady uh, salute the troops jersey. Look at, dude, look at the fucking pose, huh? Good looking yeah. kid. And um, yeah, so it was a great time. Like look, I said. look at Matt. Look at Matt. There's uh, Scott Shout Zolak right there. That looks like a hobbit. That's Scott Zolak there in the sunglasses. He's uh, one of the commentators for the Patriots radio network, cool. and he used to be the backup quarterback <laughs> to uh, Drew Bledsoe. You think he's balling? That's yeah. cool. He's definitely That's balling. Cool. Definitely balling. That's cool, man. That must have been dope. We've been super spoiled. They're in the oh, yeah. Super Bowl every year. I actually, um, I've been hearing people talking about it that prices for the Super Bowl tickets are actually cheaper than they normally are because Pats fans go, like, the Pats are in it so often that Pats fans are like, eh, we're over it. Like, yeah. not as many people are going. Well, they were saying <coughs> that the. Uh, is that true? Yeah, it's totally. It, well, it's totally true because what happened is, like, the third party sellers, they buy up all the tickets and then they want to sell them yeah. you know, to all the hardcore fans. So. They were banking on the Saints making it. And the Saints, you know, New Orleans is not too far from Atlanta. Right. And they were going to overtake the city, and the, the prices would be outrageous. Mm. So the Saints lost. Now you got the Rams coming into town. Yeah. The Rams have were in L.A. They, were they moved wow. to St. Louis. They moved to St. Louis, lost all their L.A. fans. And then from St. Louis, they moved back to L.A., so they lost all their St. Louis fans. That was pretty recent. They just moved back to LA. And like on top of that, year, right? on top of that, they moved the Chargers from San Diego to LA in the same season. So now there's two teams in LA that the people in LA don't care about. So right. They don't have. In the Super Bowl. There's not many hardcore fans to come out and buy all the tickets. Right. So with that, and with the Patriots going there nine times in the last 17 years, there's not a, a huge hardcore fan base, you know, looking for tickets. Wow. Which brought the prices way down. I say if normal. we can get them for, like, under 500 we should go. When yeah, we say they're, they're, like, they're, like, they're, like, they're, they're three and four grand. Well, yeah. so no, I what did they used to be? Yeah, yeah, so right, right now they uh, estimated that it would be around 4400 for a ticket, but they drop every day. Yeah. So you can get it for twenty nine ninety four on Ticketmaster. You can get yeah, I want to say last year they were, like, Five, wow, six look grand. Stuff. Look at the fees. E- I last year, Eagles fees. fans were just buying the tickets like crazy last year. Philly. I thought they were poor as fuck. They got money in Philly? They're crazy. Sure, there's some nice areas fans. in Philly. Mm. Oh. All right, so that's why the prices oh, are yeah, so, so that's low. That So that's uh, <laughs> some footage from today of the people. The oh, people. that was the rally that you were at. Yeah, so. that's where I was today. It was Thank unbelievable. <laughs> Now, Damn. I got there early enough where I, could, I if was... You're, hold on, you know, if, you're, if you're not watching speech. YouTube and you're just listening, we're looking at a video of the stadium that Mike was at today, and it's fucking packed. A sea of That's 35? It's a they, sea I mean, of they, there was no tickets, so they just were estimating. They were that estimating looks like an Obama inauguration. No, there's more people saying. there than the Trump inauguration. <laughs> oh, there's more people in this room. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, so yeah, that must have been dope. Mike mic drop. Yeah, I watched that video. Tom Brady's a shit, man. And he's really starting to, like, grow into this, uh, like, social media personality. And I like he posts these little videos. He's hyped I mean, ass. everybody tells you the best. You got to kind of embrace that, it. You know, he's setting up his life after, yeah, I was after, say, after I football. Think he knows that, you know, he's he's gone soon, you know. And he's, like you said, he's setting his shit up. So 
after football, man, he, he can still have a presence and a following. He's, he's enjoying it more now than he did when he was younger. You know, it was all business before. Now he's yeah. like, you know what, I'm going to enjoy this. Well, he's he like knows he knows he's at the back half, you know what I mean? Yeah, As, yeah, if he's not, like the, at the back he's like, teeth. Yeah, he's got like... Well, you keep saying two, that. Three. Everybody keeps saying well, that. Well, you think but, it's two, three years. Well, who the hell knows now yeah, with this guy? Yeah. He said today, I saw an interview, they were like, what's the chances that this is your last game? And he was like, zero percent. Zero. Zero, yeah. Really? Zero. He's like, well, it's going to be a sad day when he leaves for He's got to cry. His whole business model of TB12 is, yeah. is based off the fact that he's doing things at his age because of the way he takes care of himself. So, you know, he's saying he eats this way, he trains this way. So the and that's the reason he that he plays so long. So the longer he plays, the better his business looks. So it's like not only is he making money and winning trophies, he's making Young his George. company look great. Like yeah. it's TB12. He sells a book. It's about what to eat. You know, it's about his his book is about like not lifting heavy weights. It's about like wow, know, yeah, doing band band resistance training on your muscles and not getting stronger, yeah. getting your muscles more flexible. Which is I'm gonna call it JP twelve. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nothing we know anything about, but and you know what, it's working for him, and he's he's, he's gonna probably be a billionaire. What are you talking about? This body's carved out of granite. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. All right, marshmallow, whatever, <laughs> tomato, tomato. <laughs> Hey, cheers, guys. Hey, cheers. Salud. Cheers. Oh, I forgot you weren't even drinking. Mike's a very uh, responsible guy. Drinking the Schweppes orange. You actually got me onto that. It's good stuff. Flavored man. carbonated water. Yeah, there's none of that, like, uh, none of that bullshit sugar. sugar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that, that, that Zevia shit, or the Stevia shit. That's Stevia? It's, still not, it's, still not it's better, but it's not the same still. It doesn't taste exactly the same as, like, coca-cola but it tastes pretty close man it's, right, you know, right, it's pretty good that's all we have the, you know i make i make her you know i want well, to make her but i have sasha grabbing for me oh, all the time yeah so does like the worst yeah, yeah we can't fuck with the soda man it's, you just know what it does to you now yeah it's pretty cool i i never i grew up in my house my dad was always just like milk juice water we you never really did soda. Soda. I realized juice you too. Like apple juice, 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 juice. juice. Yeah. You might as well drink a soda. Like, well, well, I was a milk no, drinker. It depends totally. on what. No, these parents think that they're doing the right thing. You give your kid orange juice. No Coca-Cola, but you can have orange juice. It's just bad. Dude. The it's only terrible. reason that why fruit juices are bad is because of the sugar content. Uh, unlike, let's say, soda. Soda will fucking... It'll just rot your fucking mouth. If they use it to, like, fucking take off, like, battery acid and yeah, shit. Like, so like, I don't fucking, know what the fuck. Uh, yeah. Take, like, rust off pennies and shit. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. fruit juice is natural. Like, if you had an organic orange juice, yeah. yeah if you're trying to lose weight, you probably don't want to drink fruit juices, obviously, right, right. because of the sugar content. No, but if you go get, like, a gallon of apple juice, I, I mean, it's just loaded with, like, sugar. I mean, yeah, there's oh, some yeah, vitamins absolutely. in it, but it's, it's, it puts so much sugar in it, it's, it's, it, don't, it takes away all the good effects, you know? You might as well just have a Sprite at that point. <laughs> right. Throw that shit in there. You got your lemon. You got your lime. My weakness was yeah. Mountain Dew growing up. Which right. was so fucking great. Yeah. I was never a big soda person. I was never a Mountain Dew. You know, when I was in, like, middle school, I don't know if it was true or not, but there was this rumor and this this thought I had that Mountain Dew killed your sperm. Yeah, and that I, was a, that was like an urban legend. And I was like, dude, yeah, an urban legend. I was well, like, we know that you're 14. Hold on, hold on. Before you interrupt, <laughs> I was like 13 or 14, so, like, you know how shooting going. loads at this point was a very important like thing. Why is it always about do? shooting loads with you, dude? What? Did you not go through he puberty? He was like bro? blasting through Kleenex. Did you not go through puberty? Not yet. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> apparently. You got priority you, t- you were talking about sh- breaking through Kleenexes last yeah, episode. Yeah, that's because I didn't drink Mountain Dew. Because you drink Mountain Dew. I didn't drink Mountain Dew. That's right. If I drank Mountain Dew, I'd be like a fucking leaky faucet here. I wouldn't be a fucking geyser. A geyser? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta use the Viva, man. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so recap really fast what would you say to somebody that's aspiring to be in a band like that wants to do what you did like what would you say to them to like give them the number one hint or tip or whatever or like advice don't let people take advantage of you be smart. How? how how do you do that being a young kid like you, you know you just you gotta you gotta look I think into you it. Have somebody that you trust. Yeah, you gotta look well, into a manager. You. Yeah, consulted. well, that's the thing. You gotta let them. You can't let them take advantage of you either. You have to right. study and you have to look into things. Right. You can't just go. I'm in the band and we're. He's gonna well. do the right thing. And yeah, you gotta like really just take your time. Take your time. Put every bit of everything you have into your product. You know, just. Never expect to make a penny. Just do it because no, you love do it. Do it because you love it. Put everything you have into it. Don't let people take advantage of you. Like just and and just be careful. Just everything. 
there's so many things you need to worry about, you know, with when it comes to people taking advantage of you, money, a bunch of scumbags, a bunch of scumbags, stuff. It's all greed, man. So yeah, there are three things: you take your time, and Chris Brown was pieces of be shit. smart, and don't let people take advantage of you. That's it. Yeah, you hear that? Aspiring artists that want to be famous, don't let people take advantage of you. When she offers you the coke for sex, take it. <laughs> and actually, don't, because then you're gonna end up like a fucking psychopath. <laughs> Still worth it. <laughs> no one's turning it down. Yeah, no way, man. So, um, Mike, I think I, you know, I let the audience know too that you, not only are you an avid Patriots fan, and not only do you work for probably the biggest cre- t-shirt creation company in the history of creations, but, uh, <laughs> history of <laughs> creations. <laughs> 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 But you fucking, um, you know, you, you know, we can joke and say that, oh, you, you know, you're a tournament director, but really what you did was um, you were named the VP of operations for a, a small business that was kind of failing, and you helped turn it around to now where it's growing and consistently doing well. So, yeah, tell us, I mean, what's that like? Well, I'm, I, was, I was kind of in a weird position because one of my best friends, in, uh, you know, in, in my life, uh, you know, Jay Messier, he owned a company called Donkey Dodgers Poker. And um, it's basically, for people that don't know, it's a basically traveling pub poker company. People come out to bars and they play poker and they get to eat some food. And he started this company in 2010. And I was basically a worker for him. I'd, I'd work a couple nights a week. And things were going good for a while. But after about two, two or three years... Business was just in the toilet. It was going really bad. What happened? Um, well, it, it wasn't. It wasn't really run the way it had always been. Like for two years, he was ultra successful. Who was running it? This was um, Jay Messier running it. Sound. My best friend, you are. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he did a great job with it, but you know, for for different reasons, which I, I won't get into, because he let him tell it. He the business started he failing. Want to you can tell him. <laughs> yeah, the business started failing, so he was. At the point where it was about to go out of business, where he just couldn't afford to to pay the bills, so he decided to sell it to a mutual gotta, friend of ours. What kind of bills does something like that have? I mean, because well, maybe not. I guess maybe not bills, but basically, you know, there's monthly tournaments that you have to put money towards. So the money management was kind of an issue right. with the company. Yeah, I mean, the money management was an issue, and. You know, if he'll admit it himself. A lot of times, he would show up to tournaments five minutes before they were supposed to start. Now, gotcha. you know, you got to set up tables. So he was still get like, organized. So he was in a bad place. On how to how to yeah. balance you know, that out. With in fact, I re- actually I actually remember certain people saying that, saying Absolutely. you know, yeah, they, they they were like, you know what, it's already let's say ten past, fifteen past, and you know, X Y and Z is just not present. What, what's going on? You know? Yeah, he he was in a bad place, and he just he his heart wasn't in it anymore, and he you know he he definitely lo- lost his love for it. He wasn't you know when it started, he was like all about it. I mean, he was gung ho. It, it was his life, you know what I mean. It was Sounds every like second of every day, and it became a job. And when things weren't going so great, I think it it, it kind of depressed him a bit, and everything was going downhill, and it was to the point where. Where were you at at that point? Like, where? What were you thinking? You're I was like, shit. Am I going to be out of a? Well, I mean, luckily it was my just my part time job. Yeah. But at this point, I was maybe working yeah, once, two jobs. twice a week with him. But because business was down, he was taking on more nights just because he, you know, rather than having to pay somebody, he would do it himself. So, so he, I wasn't on, working as so much. Just to to follow, this kind of sounds like a recipe for a disaster. The fact that he is. And I don't, I don't want to sound like we're batching him, but we're trying to figure well, out. Oh, no, he's doing on. great now. But imagine than being now. A, you know, a, a small business owner and your heart is no longer in it, so you're kind of running it poorly. And then combine that with the fact that you don't want to pay somebody that does a good job, so now you're running it more often. Well, to be honest with you, he never told me, like, you, I, I can't afford to pay you. He, 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 would, he would let me keep working, but, I mean, at the end of the night, I would see what, what money was left over. You know so what I mean? So I'd be like, "Hey, Jay, you know. man, you really, you know, you really want me to work tonight, man? Because you know, you need to make some money. You know what it's I mean, like, bro? So, you know, so it was kind of a mutual thing. I mean, I understood it. You know what I mean? I, I, I knew. So I what knew, changed the minute ago? What, what happened? Well, he decided to so, sell the company to a mutual friend of me and his. So um, you guys know him, Mr. Paul Carew. Who is the opposite of? Yeah, he's, showing up late and mismanaging funds. Definitely was the opposite. 
uh, of how Jay was when he was, you know, right on top of everything. Everything's paid. I mean, everything is. Shout out to Jay Messier. We're we're totally not trying to. No, no. Yeah. I was just coming out to say Jay Messier. He doesn't need our shout outs. This motherfucker. Jay Messier is, is like the king. He is the king of social media in Rhode Island right he's now. I mean, right he now. he went from a pizza delivery guy after he sold Donkey Dodgers to now he's a town councilman of West Warwick, that and he game. has about three or four Facebook pages where he promotes businesses, and he's doing very well for himself uh, and. He, he wouldn't mind me saying these things, trust me. Okay, good, good. good. It, it, it was a blessing in disguise when he sold Donkey Dodgers. Cause he's, he's the king of social media now for anybody that uh, lives in Rhode Island. I'm sure you guys know him. Yeah. Okay. So anyway. Work that off. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, one of my best friends in the world, Paul Carew, took over uh, Donkey Dodgers. And he ran it like a, a business. And, he, you know, he... he Lost money for a while in the beginning and turned everything around and brought up the numbers and it's running very, to this day, that was in 2013 or maybe late 2012, he took over and now it's, you know, I guess six years, six years later, seven years later and the com company's is going really well right now and we, we run tournaments seven days a week, we run tournaments, three tournaments on Sunday, two on Saturday. Uh, two on Wednesday, so it's going really good now. I want to hear your perspective, like as far as dealing with the customer base. I'm sure I, I know. So, like, I, I've been in customer service. A lot of people when they're starting out jobs, they've been in customer service. Is the sometimes it gets tough dealing with people in general? Yeah, especially and to um, deal with them every day. Yeah, I mean, especially when you uh, take into account that a lot of them are drinking. So a lot of them are drinking alcohol when they're playing. So, but that's that's part saying? of the business, you know. It's just it's we're there at bars to get these people to come in and drink. So right. The bars, the bars can make money. You know, we can so make in, money. In a way, you're like advocating alcoholism. Absolutely. Where do you hold the tournaments? Um, at at different bars in the state. I mean, um, basically, basically how how it works is the players come in, they purchase a buffet, so they get food. It's twenty bucks. And they get to play buffet. poker. I fucking like that shit. Absolutely. And then we <laughs> give, like, give out cash play? prizes. No, I like buffets, man. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, yeah. I love buffets. We, we, we already know you have a gambling buffets. addiction. <laughs> no, there's no gambling. Gamble. Listen, I, the only card game I know how to fucking play is blackjack. I can't play. Remember Thanksgiving? Yeah. I couldn't play. I can't play. Yeah, there's a few people that play that I can't, can't pick play it poker up. either. I can't pick it up. You're fine. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> you the people at Donkey Dodgers can't play anyway. Is there ever a point, though, like when you're just like, you know what? I'm sure there is, obviously, with any job, yeah. no matter what it is. But, I mean, an, an elongated point where you're like, I just can't deal with these people anymore. Yeah, for sure. I mean, some, you know, like this past Friday night, we had you know, almost 80 people there. and Yeah, that's, that's a lot of people to manage. You know, and, they, you know, it's just it's a, it's a yeah. point where you get a line of people out the door where you're trying to sign them in and give them chips and seat, and then you got three or four people saying, all right, hey, we got a full table. Yeah, we need a new table. And, and you know, you're going back and forth. But it's, 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 it's your job. You got to deal with it. You, and when, you know, most of the time I'm sitting there, I got my, most most of my friends, I'm sitting there, I'm watching a game on the TV. I'm on my phone. And most of it runs itself. While you're on so, the clock. So it's not, it's not <laughs> overall, it's not a hard job. You right. Know but there's going to be times where you got to deal, deal with drunk you. people or yeah. you got to deal with just assholes that are just there. Or or just just there to fight. fucking needle me and, and like, yeah, fuck with you. Yeah. Bother me. You can't break up a fight. Look at this guy. <laughs> Do you have, has there been any fights? Um, yeah, there's been a yeah. few. I mean, nothing nothing major. I mean, usually I'm, I'm a pretty good voice of reason. Yeah. And most people that play there respect me, and I'm friendly with most everybody. It's not the Mike so, Otten show, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so I usually I'm pretty good at diffusing the situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Here and there, maybe a handful of times in, in you gotta get stern. In nine years, I've had to like get in between people, you yeah. know. But for the most part, most of the players know each other. It's mm. the same people yeah. playing yeah. All the throughout time. the weeks. Yeah, it's very true. So, so they all know each other, and, and most of them are at least cordial with each other. Are there some people there that it's like a full time job for them? Like they just go and date. Oh, you mean players? Yeah, it's a full time players. job taking care of this kid sometimes. Right. Listen. No, this <laughs> not to put you on the spot, but. I'm about to put you on the spot. No, no, not to put you on the spot at all. But is there any one specific player that you hate more than everybody else yes. and you can use their name? You know me. You can't say that. <laughs> what are you talking I don't about? Hate anybody, I don't think. You know, there's, there's a, I'm not going to say names, but there's a few players when they come in, I'm just like, 
Oh, oh here we go. Yeah, now, now, now I gotta keep my ears open on this guy because he's always getting getting in an argument with somebody. He's always but needling some butts of the players. Yeah, absolutely. I love, love everybody. Of course you do. I mean, honestly, if it's a job where I get to sit in a bar, I could drink if I wanted to. I usually don't. Right. Mm-hmm. If there's a game on, you get the game on the TV. I can watch it. And basically, I just gotta make sure nobody's punching each other. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's just true. You know what I mean? Yeah. Announce the time. What's the you know yeah, kind of structure? I mean, it's, it's, it's a simple job. I'm, you know. What's the closest you've ever came to punching somebody? Pun- never punching somebody, but uh, I've, I've had Scott Ploof. Scott Ploof will tell you one of the first tournaments I ever worked at. Scott Ploof uh, got into a physical alt- altercation with I don't know if you know Bob Champagne from back in the day. That sounds Champagne. really familiar. yeah. You, you know him. Yeah, at, at Shanghai same. Gardens in Alabama, and it's right around the corner from my house. Yeah, and they <laughs> they were in each other's face, and they just started shoving each other now. It's one thing at a bar, but now we're at a Chinese restaurant, a family restaurant. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So Shaking ninja stars. I mean, right. at a bar, <laughs> seeing someone get shoved at a bar is it's not a big deal. I mean, you don't want it to happen, but it, it happens. But at, at a family restaurant, story. yeah, <laughs> at a family <laughs> restaurant. So I, you know, I had to, I had to grab him. I had to grab Scott Plouffe. I, I picked him up and like just dragged him away. You know what I mean? Because he was gonna kill him. He was gonna right. kill him. He died of temper. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, if you ever see Scott asking about that, it's a pretty, pretty good. He's been, good he's been uh, showing up a lot more frequently recently. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think he's a changed man. He's, he's a good guy. Changed man. Yeah. Good guy. He's a good guy. Yeah. I didn't say he was a bad guy. I'm just saying he's showing up more. Why don't you like him, Josh? Jeez. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, boys. Yeah, well, so, I mean, it's a job. Yeah. Hey, man. That's good. Um, I think uh, we've been going for a little while, though. So, it's it's two been and a half hours. I'm getting tired. Been fun, man. It has been fun, uh, but just so everybody knows, Mike Donkey Dodgers, where um, how can they find information? In it? Really, what it's so it's like pub poker, right? You know, you said it's absolutely it's Donkey Dodgers players, poker. People that maybe ha- they're not serious about poker, but they want to play poker and kind of want to learn to play more often. Listen, it's Donkey Dodgers poker on Facebook. It's not a it's not a league. Anybody can play. You don't have to sign up. Anybody off the street wants to come and try it out. All you got to do is show up. You get signed in and you can play. You don't have to sign up. You don't have to join a league. There's, there's no, no subscription. There's, there's no, no requirements league. of playing, you know, uh, uh, so many times a week. You can play once a year. You can play once a month. You can play every night. It doesn't make a difference. So it's probably perfect for the person that has played, you know, at family gatherings for pennies. And they Absolutely. Say, hey, it's a, fun it's, game. It's a good way to shot. learn how to play poker. Like, if you know, say if you're a little intimidated about going to play at Twin River or at Foxwoods. And you want to try out playing some live poker? It's perfect. That's exactly what per- it is. Perfect. Uh, it's, I, it's, I always find that you know, like the the pub poker events are you know, it's a great social um, gathering. Also, so like there, there 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 is obviously the poker. There's like three elements: the poker, the social part of it, and then like the food and drink. And absolutely, yeah. I mean, I, I would say it's almost more of a social thing than yeah. an actual real poker tournament i mean True it that. is poker but True it's that. if you're looking for a great 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 poker tournament this is more of a social thing come out have fun meet have people fun. some people are going to take it super serious some are going to not care about what hands they play and some are going to be in the middle but overall it's i mean it's a great time you win some good cool. money you can absolutely i you mean depending on the sure. night on friday nights we, we give out a thousand dollars every friday that. Right. that's still and uh so Troy, I know you say you don't have any like toys or anything, but with your your music now, yeah, do you share any of it? Facebook, YouTube, yeah, how I, can we find it? If we want to so find some I music? just released a song over the summer called "Back from War." There's a music video out for it. What's it called? Back from Back War? from War. Um, I did it with a producer called Chris Sabansky. He's yeah. a DJ out of Providence. He was actually in my band, and now he's a like EDM producer. Nice. So it's Chris Sabansky featuring Troy Ray. So it's almost like if you hear Zed featuring. Uh, Justin Bieber type of thing so it's nice, like a nice. feature but we did the song together we did a music video I released it it went viral on Facebook we got we released it twice the first time we got 40,000 views oh the shit the next time we got f- another 40 or another like it was like 45,000 views and 47,000 views so all together it almost has 100,000 views alright man well that's dope and Dude, then on awesome. YouTube it's got 2,000 views so that is if you guys heard that the name of the song one more time it's Back From War Back From Work and the artist is it's Chris Sabansky featuring Troy Ray Chris Sabansky featuring Troy Wait, Ray guys back, so go check back that out Back From More or Back, ba- back For More Back For More how am yeah. I saying Back From Work Back To Work Back For Work <laughs> Back, back, back To Work it's talking about like Back For More guys my bad my bad so, oh, yeah, we'll dumb. definitely, you know, awesome. share that with everybody. 
Yeah, it's I appreciate cool, you guys coming out. Yeah, Josh, appreciate you. I appreciate you having me over. Thank you, guys. It was fun. It was fun. My first podcast. Yeah? Yeah. I've done interviews, but I've never done podcasts. Yeah, for sure, dude. We'll definitely have you back. Yeah, absolutely. You got more. Have me back on. Hopefully, we'll talk about it. Yeah. My I girlfriend's going to love this. <laughs> yeah. I just want to hear the good stuff. Right. I want to hear big, big football glory team. holes. Yeah. I want to hear anything about the good shit. But all right, guys, thanks for listening. Um, peace out from J Squared. That's our new slogan. Later. <laughs>